So, Steven, what do you think of my new shelving units and desk in my office? They're pretty solid. They're tall. Well, I don't know how you're going to reach the top shelves. <laughs> I, I wanted to do the, the library style thing, but it wouldn't. I don't think it would look good in there. I don't well, think you have enough room in there. Yeah, it, I don't think I do. But for anybody out there, I, I had a, a whole office put together. I've got 10 foot high shelving units that start about 25 inches off the ground. It's 10 foot high by 8 feet wide. So it's really freaking cool for bookshelves. And it goes on one major wall and then up the side of the second wall. That one's only like two or two and a half, three feet wide mm -hmm. on the second one. And then I got this awesome bar top stop height desk to work at with a separate computer. That's where, if anybody saw the DJI Phantom unboxing, that's where I filmed that thing. Oh, can they see the shelves in the background in that video? Were they built yet? Yeah, well, they they couldn't see it because it was straight down. I okay. did the GoPro straight down. I didn't know if it was wide enough to capture that. So. No, but I'm really excited to get that thing set up. I love the printer, the shelf underneath. We had holes drilled so that I can run wires through, like put Drobos in one of them or something so that they're off my other desk. I may even go back and have a secondary actual desk built. I don't know I'm, yet. I'm excited just to get organized yeah, I know. and not I, to, to search for Raw Talk stuff every week. That's the point. We want to get organized. So anyway... Why don't we jump into this? This is uh, Jared Polin, Frono's Photo. Dot com and welcome to Raw Talk, episode number 80. We've made it all the way to 80. I'm calling this one, How to Get 30,000 YouTube Subscribers in Eight Months. Now, there's a lot of people out there who are, are going to try to sell you on how to do this stuff that you need to listen to. Their, there's one guy I get his, all the time, this, this guy, I'm not going to mention his name, on Facebook constant barrage of his sponsored posts he's like i'm nearing 1 million views on youtube learn from me how to be successful and get a lot of free traffic from youtube yeah that makes sense but all these other people are now going to try to sign up for his program he's going to make a shit ton of money off of that he only has a, a million views just views not subscribers views. So he's got he's got like uh maybe 30,000 subscribers which is if that not bad no but. that's not bad but when you're the but teacher and you're trying to set exactly, yourself yeah. as the authority and how to do it, if you were that freaking good, you would have a lot more subscribers and be one of the biggest people out there. But no, they'll just sit there and they'll just sell people the, the well, this is how you do it. There's no secret. And speaking of no secret, we have an interview this week with Matt Beck. He has uh, his YouTube channel is called Free Salon Education Ooh. on YouTube. That's right. He's not even a photographer. But I had him in as because he, he sent me questions, emails. He was local. He was in, he's in New Hope, so he's not far. And I got on the phone with him one day after he sent me a video. I'm like, dude, you got to change this, this, and this. And he listened. Uh, basically, you're going to hear the story of how he got introduced to my stuff. You're going to hear how he ended up. He's got 35,000 subscribers right now mm -hmm. in about eight months, which is pretty awesome how he's gotten traction. You're going to hear his story. So it's not me telling you how I think it should be done or how I did it. It's somebody else who followed what I've said, even though I haven't been teaching it as a separate thing. I've just been saying how I do it. He followed it to a T. And you can see the results. And so definitely listen for this interview. This is one of those interviews that, that should be an eye-opener for anybody. You sat through it. Yeah. It was pretty good. Well, it, it's amazing how much he learned off of just you kind of talking about it on, on this program. You know, there's not really necessary video, videos of you specifically saying, this is how you do it, blah, blah, blah. But all the stuff that he picked up along the way and, and like you said, followed your model. And it's he's up to, what, 30,000 yeah, subscribers? He's at 35,000 right now. I just looked today. But couple months well the other thing is he's not even a photographer he didn't have a camera he doesn't know very much he learned everything he knows about photography from watching what i've done and just figuring it out yeah kit lenses whatever whatever works mm -hmm. to make it work so we're gonna hear that interview we'll wrap up and talk more about that at the end but that that's definitely pretty cool so on to the april fool's video <laughs> steven yes that we filmed uh around march 9th or 10th i believe I think that we, we filmed it in early March. I came to you and I said, look, I got an idea. I want to film this because this is the April Fool's video I want to do. And I, I came up with what I wanted to say and I got really pissed off with the video. You know that. I got you into did. that. I got into that act because it was good acting. Your I thought acting it was good was acting. was pretty spot on. It was good acting. What can I tell you? Mine was terrible. It was all right. <laughs> That's I was why I didn't like, chime in. I was going to be like, Stephen, cut, cut that out. <laughs> cut that. Really? What? <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my God. What? I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Um, but no, the, the, the whole idea was Nikon was doing away with Raw in, in... I wanted it to be believable. I didn't want to be like... Ken Rockwell is coming out with a camera, you know? I wanted it to be believable. I wanted to pull something over on people, but put it out on or around April 1st. It came out four hours before because 
uh, Nikon rumors had crashed. Perfect their timing. servers were down, and I was like, "Well, I could use that as a way to put this out. That like, if this is true, I mean, th- if this could be the reason why Nikon rumors crashed. So it was down for like an hour or two. Yeah, they were down for a while too. So if it's 8 p.m. in Philadelphia Eastern Standard Time on Octo- on on March 31st, that means in a bunch of places around the world." It's all, including Europe, it's already April 1st. Mm-hmm. So that's why I did it then, because I just wanted to put it out and I wanted to see what would happen. A lot of people do that. Well, I know a lot of places that a lot of people put it out stuff over the weekend, uh, uh, bands at least that I followed for the radio station, like the Flaming Lips put out this parody album and they announced it on the weekend, but they actually announced that it was a, a joke on April Fool's Day. So, I mean, it all, it all depends on when you release it yeah. and, and your reasoning behind it and stuff like that. And I, and I did, I, I let my Nikon PR rep know that I was doing something. Mm-hmm. I didn't tell him exactly what I was doing because I didn't, I didn't want to tell him exactly what I was doing. But I let him know the gist of it. I let him know that it was, I was going to mention the Ken Rockwell edition camera, but that's all I told him. So I didn't, I didn't tell him what I was doing, but I didn't want to, I didn't do anything that was going to be disrespectful. You know, so it's April Fool's. I mean, you can do what you want. You can just within <laughs> it's reason. Meant to be a joke. But it, it, what it does tell you is that there were a lot of people posting because I talked to my Nikon guy the day after. He's like, he's like, yep. He's like, thanks for all the stuff on my Facebook wall <laughs> on the on Nikon's Facebook wall today from all the people sitting there going. You guys are, all, you know, just ripping on them. Yeah. For how could you do this? I heard. And also it's a play on, it's a commentary on the world we live in today. That people will take any news that they hear. It's on the internet. And then real. spread it and then misinterpret it. Not that I put anything in there to be misinterpreted because mm-hmm. it was meant to be what it was. But again, it was a, it was kind of like a rumor, right? Because the way that I put it was, I got this out of nowhere. This release came to me. I didn't have an NDA. So if this is true, I will be jumping ship. That is like, it do, it's not a fact. Yeah. It's not a fact until it's a freaking fact. So Until that, Nikon announces it themselves. Right. And, that, and, that's what it, and that's the whole thing with all the rumor sites and like now with the iPhone 6 stuff, it was the same thing with the iPhone 5 and the 4 and the, the 4S and the 4. The whole thing, it's just like, oh, this is fact. Because you hear people, I heard that the next iPhone is going to look like this. It's going to be curved. Well, you take it with a grain of salt. You know, you, right. you don't take anything seriously until it's actually until officially it's announced. announced. And I thought it was a funny joke. Yeah. Well, I, for me, I never trust anything I read on April Fool's Day, even if it's from the actual, you know, official announcement or whatever that day. I right. just don't even read anything right. that day. Exactly. So I thought it was good. I'll be doing uh, another one again on or around April 2nd <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah, I'm April sure. 2nd. <laughs> We'll come up with something. But yeah, you, it's not like I could put that out in the middle of June and be like, ha ha, yeah. got you. It's the one time of year where it's acceptable to do that. Exactly. And I didn't know there were written rules to how to There's do it. There's unwritten laws Un- for it. Unwritten laws for yeah. how to put on an April Fool's Remember joke. Remember that band, Unwritten Law? No. They had this one song. I forget what it was called, but Google them. You guys will enjoy You're lucky it. I don't know because I'd probably try to sing it. <laughs> um, so, oh, I emailed Ken Rockwell and I sent it to him. I saw the email. And you saw his response. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I responded back to him and told him that I fell for his one uh, like a bunch of years ago. He put one out where it was um, Nikon P. It was like for photojournalists that didn't have a tripod mount on the bottom. So he photoshopped the rubber across the bottom so there was no tripod mount because photojournalists don't need one so they don't use it. Mm-hmm. That was his April Fool's joke back then. It was pretty believable. Did he get a lot of people on it? Oh, I'm sure he did. I don't remember that one. When, how long ago was it's that? It's probably three or four years ago at hmm. this point. It yeah. may have been even before Frono's photo. Does he do one every year? He didn't do one this year. Yeah. He still doesn't want to come on the show. <laughs> but I have a dialogue. We email. I email him all the time. His and email he, was funny. And he responds back in a nice manner every single time. Yeah, it was good. And I'll still continue to rip on it. And one day, maybe we'll be in the same place at the same time. But I feel like it's a friendly rip on him. You know it what is. I mean? Every well, time. Because here, here's the thing that most people don't realize. When I first started, I vilified the shit out of him for the, the raw thing. And I still vilify him for the raw thing, right? Mm-hmm. You're looking all the way around the room. I'm just, just making sure cameras. all the cameras are yeah. going. Well, Sutter's over there. He hasn't even said hi today. Hey, Sutter. <laughs> Howdy. <answer. laughs> He's actually here. Um, the, the whole thing was, you know, the guy has dealt with a lot of negative comments for years, right? And I was just like, how do I deal with this? So I, I was emailing him back in the day. I'm like, how do you deal with some of this stuff? 
and it, exactly, I was the one who was doing the negative things to him, but I was asking him questions. But he, he's always been nice enough to email me back. That's good. So maybe one day we'll still get him on because I'm not going to sit here with an interview and and just bury somebody. I want to know the facts and I want to have information. That's that's what an interview is about. And anyway, because there's a lot of people that would think that I would he would just come on and I'd be like, oh, you're an asshole. You're this and you're that. You know, that's not going to no, happen. You're very respectable, no matter who it is when it comes to the podcast. And that is about all. Stephen, are we ready (laughs) for photo news? Yes. Let's get ready for photo news. No, I can't say it's probably trademarked (laughs) by uh, Michael Buffer. Michael Buffer? Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for photo news. (laughs) First up, lens tag. They uh, they had its first their first successful case of a stolen lens being returned to its rightful owner. Uh, proof that this concept does actually work. Photographer, I think this is how you pronounce it, Syad Ma, Syad Ma. I don't know. Syed Ma. Yo-yo Ma. He was reunited with his Tamron 24 to 70 2.8 lens uh, after his camera bag was stolen nearly six weeks ago. The thief then sold the lens via Craigslist to a photographer. Um, basically stole the lens, sold it via Craigslist to a photographer named Philip Martin, who spent a grand on it. And Martin then went to run the lens through the lens tag database where he discovered it was stolen. Uh, the crazy part is that he reached out to Trevor Sayer, the founder of lens tag and offered it back to the original photographer for free, free of charge. He wasn't going to, you know, uh, ask for money or anything like that. And hopefully good karma comes back to this kid. Cause he obviously did the right thing. Uh, and it's just another reason to sign up for lens tag. I mean, that's not a plug or anything. I still need to do it myself. Well, one thing is it was a Tamron lens, so I wouldn't feel so bad. Oh <laughs> just, but no, it, it's it, I, I talk to tro- uh, Trevor, Trevor all the time because mm-hmm. uh, we've been I've given tips and ideas and I've and I've pushed it. And a lot of people have signed up. I've used it with my new gear. I signed up. I still never actually filled it out. I got to do it. Oh, I still need to sit down and do all of my gear. That's to put what in I there. mean. Yeah. The thing is, if here, here's some tips. If you're going to go ahead and purchase stuff on Craigslist, you have to be very, very careful about what you're purchasing. I ask for a photo of the camera, of the lens. I, mean, I haven't done Craigslist in a long time. I sold my 17 to 55 2.8 on Craigslist back in the day. We met at a Home Depot parking lot. And uh, yeah, do it in public. Always do it in public. Yeah, and bring someone with you. And bring somebody with you. Make sure that they know where you're going because you're going to have either a lot of cash on hand or, or yeah. And then you get those people, and I know I'm sidestepping my what I was going to say, but you get those people, you put something up and they're like, oh, we'll come down from New York to come and get it. And it's just like, yeah, you don't know what I'm talking about. That's a little shady, so no. But when, when you're going to buy a lens... Always ask for the serial number before you even do anything. Yeah, first thing. Like this, you can run it through the database, and it's going to come up as stolen. Then you can just report the fuck out of this person and hopefully get them beaten to a freaking pulp and arrested. Set yeah. them up on a sting. It's called entrapment. <laughs> I, you know, they tell you entrapment's not legal, but that's what the police... Dude. allegedly <laughs> allegedly do, is they entrap people, especially when they get, like, stings for hookers. Oh, you yeah? know? And they, I, well, I don't know. Well, they said he's blushing. No, I'm not. Sutter knows. I'm saying I really don't know. Well, so what they do is <laughs> they they, do, yeah. they get a call woman to go up to your car, and then if you solicit them and ask them how much it is, then they arrest you for being a John. You know, a John. Yeah, John. That's what they're called. <laughs> is that the code name for uh, a John? Yeah, <laughs> a guy who's propositioning a, a hooker. Yeah, she's called a hooker. He's I, called a John. Yeah, and if it's a girl, it's called a Jane. Ah. If she's propositioning me, that happens all the time. But that's the thing that's called that's entrapment. So anyway, I would love to if they caught this asshole guy, they should go through Craigslist and they should be able to go to Craig and be like, hey, (laughs) Hey, can we can we find this guy's IP address and search it all the way back to his post to where it came from now that they know it was stolen? Can they do that? I, I guarantee you if somebody gave a shit enough, because most of the time. They don't want to be bothered. They, law enforcement, don't want to be bothered with certain things that takes work. Mm-hmm. Allegedly, some of them, <laughs> not all of them. I'm just saying. Next story. No, but anyway, sign up for Lens Tag. It's free, uh, and it it it's free, and it's a good thing to have. You put your 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 in, your. So, uh, serial numbers in there it verifies them if you have an issue you say that it's been stolen it goes right out to google and it just it, it gets across the internet really yeah. damn quick so if anybody searches it you won't be able to sell it and the more people that use it the safer everybody will be because you know 
that we at all if the more photographers that know it the more they're going to search it the better off we're going to be and, yeah. and stores need to check if it out if this became like an actual standard in the in a photography community then this stuff won't happen anymore hopefully yeah or or it will get back better because you'll be arresting people more often exactly exactly uh, next up GoPro they announced a new software update this week along with various new accessories for the Hero 3 and 3 Plus they did they did how do i update it uh, I guess you go to the GoPro website. I didn't read that far into it. GoPro, uh, the accessories include two new housing units, one called the Blackout Housing, uh-huh. which is a black matte finish for $50 for special ops filming. $50? $50 hairs. No wonder why they're a multi-billion dollar company. They exactly. sell a piece of plastic for $50. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. Uh, and the other being called the frame, which is literally just like a frame around it. Well, that's what we are using right now yeah. on mine is the frame, but, but it's, what did they announced it's it, different than the old one it's supposed to be the lightest and smallest frame yet so they that's only the had one frame it's right there well now it's a little lighter and smaller i'm getting hot i'm gonna take off my jacket and it's uh that one's gonna be 40 dollars. it's getting hot and- to make things even better uh there's also the yeah, goose- e- even less even less plastic uh in the in the frame so it's 10 bucks less yeah pretty much the gooseneck which is a new flexible monopod like mount for 20 bucks that they're selling now it's kind of looks like an individual gorilla pod leg and then there's the dual hero system which will run 200 dollars that's which i think is really overpriced and it's meant for shooting 3d with two gopros back to back pretty much uh now regarding the software update gopros free app has been updated to a new version to deliver wireless camera software updates to the hero 3 plus oh three plus not the three now also improvements to camera software and unlo- unlock a number of new modes to give hero three plus black users greater control that's racism steven captures that that's you know what i racism, mean racism buddy i was waiting for that, that um it, 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 you, you take it back Shut up. <laughs> of basically b- greater control of capture settings, including new super view modes at 1080 60p. I demand that they come out Let with the finish. white edition <laughs> before you. They've interrupt. had the silver edition, the black edition. Where's the Indian edition? <laughs> oh my God. But I know people hate when I interrupt you. Just let me like not interrupt five times in one story. That's the one thing that really gets to me. Touche. <laughs> Um, oh wait, wait! Can't you, just hear, the, can't you um, just hear the comments now? Jared's such an asshole. All he does is interrupt Stephen. All right, I'll be quiet. I'm just gonna take my time. Photo now. news. Um, but it also has new auto low light modes, and it sports higher frame rates as well. Now, also new ProTune settings offer greater customization options, so users can now manage color, ISO limit, sharpness, and exposure, in addition sorry. to white balance. I'm sorry. Get out of here. I'm sorry. <laughs> For those on the podcast, he's uh, hugging me. Um, now, Hero 3 Plus Silver users will enjoy a wider field of view in all camera modes with the new software update. And finally, they're releasing new GoPro Player desktop software for Mac and PC, which will deliver a shutter-free playback solution for footage shot at any resolution, including 2.7K and 4K. And the new desktop software will let you control playback speed, uh, watch your time lapse, and burst photo sequences, and will also export full res, full res stills from video. That story is finished. Now you can comment. I got nothing. Now you got nothing. I'm done the story, and you got nothing now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just playing with you. I know. I know. Um, yeah, that I obviously the Hero Four is around the corner. Yeah. Um, it's been a little bit since they've had the the three plus. They they're they need to stay on their game because competition is coming up from behind. Not very well coming up from behind, but Panasonic. Not even there's Panasonic. I wouldn't there's say Sony. Their competition yet. I, I don't know that they are so far ahead of the game right now with everything. That they need to just keep evolving and pushing the lever, pushing pushing the envelope. They're gonna, they want to be a media company. You know how last week we talked about the Maker Studio selling for five hundred million dollars. Crazy. GoPro has how much footage out there in the world? Because everybody that creates it, they have people dedicated to just pulling videos off of YouTube and contacting the people to use in their ads. So they want to just become like the chat. They have a they have a, a an Xbox One channel. Do they? Yeah. Wow. Where they put their media out there. So they're more than just a company that makes hardware. They now create content. 
So look for GoPro related TV series is coming out on their own channels. They're going to make their own stuff, tutorials and and hey, here we are in the Antarctic or here we are doing this and here we are flying a, a quadricopter with a GoPro on it and just making cool content. That would be with it. actually a pretty good series because it'd be like kind of kind of like America's Funniest Videos, but in this case, it's going to be like the America's Craziest Videos with all GoPro-related angles and point-of-view stuff and yep. stuff you don't normally see. Nope. So I'm just... I'm just I'll, br- I'll probably get the Hero 4. I'm not going to jump to a 3+, plus, depending on what the 4... Obviously, it's going to do fa- yeah, better well 4K. It's probably going to do 4K at 24 frames a second. We're, I'm going to wait. The probably software- a little smaller... I don't know. I mean, everything's getting smaller. It does. But at some point they need to keep the accessories all the same because then they have to retool and it gets into more processing, more money. Not that they're making, not making enough money, but if you keep it kind of similar and you get it to a certain size for maybe two years or two generations, then you stick with it because all the accessories will work from one to the next. That is true. That is true. But it's like iPhones, I feel like. I mean, they make all these accessories and then the next For year... For two generations. It switches, yeah. But it is still two generations, so it's over a two-year period. Yeah. Because that, that's the same thing. Like, the one was the only... The first one was the only one that they didn't have a second iteration of. Interesting. They just went right from the 3 to the 3 GS uh, to the 4, the 4S, 5, five 5S, 5S, and, and it just means that the 6 should be slightly different. Yeah. New format. We'll see. Next up, we have German company Reflecta. They announced a new three, no, not three, 35 millimeter film scanner called the ProScan 10T that will scan your negatives at 10,000 DPI. Uh, it'll scan at a high dynamic range of 3.9 DMAX. Uh, and the scanner has only been announced in Germany so far with the price of about $643 US dollars. Schnell! <laughs> uh, so you, we'll see. We'll do slides. I believe it'll do slides too. See? Now, it doesn't do medium format though, which a lot of people I think are a little annoyed by. Yeah, so the, the the thing about scanners is nobody makes them. Yeah. Uh, Epson made them. No one makes I, really good ones well, that are this price. Nikon had the, how much is it? 643 bucks US dollars, I think 469 pounds. The funny thing, the cool scan was awesome. Mm-hmm. The Nikon cool scan and 4, 000, it was scuzzy. 5, it was scuzzy connected. So nobody can use that. It wasn't even USB, so they don't even make it anymore. But that thing was fast. You could get adapters for it so that you could put 50 slides in there, but if one jammed, then you're SOL. You know, mm-hmm. the second one jammed out of 50, and you come back two hours later, and nothing happened because it it, it was just slow. It'd be very interesting. What they re- I, I'm curious to see if they're actually scanners or if they're actually cameras that take a picture of the negative. Yeah. Because that's what I did with my mom's slides. She has thousands of, like a couple thousand slides from the 70s. And I borrowed a uh, 60 millimeter macro with a Nikon adapter for the front. It was a Nikon 60 millimeter macro with a slide adapter on the front. You would slide the slide in and I would just pop a strobe. I set my strobes up. I would take a picture tethered into the computer and I'd see it pop right up. Now I had a raw file from those slides and I could correct for them and everything. Hmm. It was unbelievable. It was slow because I had to take a picture each time. Yeah. But I, I focused, I got the picture, and now I had my mom's slides all in the computer. My um my dad has so many slides, it's ridiculous. I remember I, I bought this really crappy scanner, I don't even know what it was called, but back probably in like high school, and attempted to scan some of them in. It took like 10 minutes per slide. Really? He's got like thousands. So I gave up on that idea real fast. That's why a lot of people used to send that stuff out, but I haven't heard mm-hmm. much about those companies anymore. That a lot of them don't exist anymore. You, you would send a box full of your... It's, actually, they go to India. And it takes weeks yeah. to do it as well. And they charge some crazy number per slide. Uh, finally, a solution for Nikon users who want to use Magic Lantern in their DSLRs um, now exists, kind of. Nikon Hacker released a set of hacks which will bring Nikon's 1080 video bitrate up to 64 megabits per second versus the standard 24 megabits per second. Uh, now, still in beta right now, but the software supports 11 Nikon DSLRs, pretty much from the D3100 and up to the D4. Um, it also gives clean HDMI out to some of the cameras which previously didn't support it. Uh, and now Nikon Hacker first brought this to light back in February, but formally announced it pretty much like a week or two ago. Awesome. Yeah, so those who want to do clean HDMI out and a better bit rate, it's kind of compared to Canon's all-eye feature. Uh, I don't know if it all-eye is that high of a bit rate, though, 64 megabits per second, but interesting stuff if you really want to do some color grading with Nikon stuff. I wanted to read the road plug earlier. Oh. Can you input it earlier? Uh, no, that's going to mess things up. So I'm going to read sound it. sound odd. <laughs> I'm going to read it now, All right. and I'll just give them an extra one next week. That's fine. Or I could just hold it. Anyway, road plug. Road 
is still doing that contest. That $70,000 one that we talked about where you can win $70,000 in prizes. For more information, go to My Road Reel. That's M Y R O D E R E E L dot com. That's my road reel. Not road world, road rules. Wait, how do you spell it? It's my <laughs> M Y R O D E R E E L dot com. You writing that down? You talk too fast. You road do reel. <laughs> anyway. I've talked about it a lot. Go to myroadreel.com. Road's doing that contest. Get all the rules. Definitely enter. There's no reason why you shouldn't enter, especially when you have a chance to win some nice prizes. Back to you. <laughs> Back to news. Uh, we have... I Where read we? the news today. Oh, boy. What song is that? <sighs> the Beatles. Oh. About a man who made the grain. Woke up. Got out of bed. Grag to comb across my head. <laughs> something got something through a second. Oh, fuck. I, sorry, I butchered the Beatles. <laughs> you got to say earmuffs. Earmuffs. <laughs> a little late again. <laughs> a little late. I know. But it's explicit. I know. Thank you to so Tipper Gore. For that. <laughs> Do you know who Tipper Gore is? Uh, I forget. Tipper Gore was Al Gore's wife. That's it. Was. Yeah, you uh, talked about it. Back her in the day, she went to Congress and said, this music is ruining our children. She they the need to put parental, there, right? expli- yeah, parental yeah. warning. And then what bands knew, what bands started to do, they knew that if they put a parental warning on it, they were guaranteed a million sales. Yeah. And that's what then, they did. That entice people to buy it. They're like, oh my God, this has to be totally explicit. It's and like I'm, you put not, not safe for work on post and that automatically gets more people to view it because they're like, oh, I wonder why it's not safe for work. And that's why I didn't say that for yoga. You know, for Googled yoga. nude yoga. <laughs> I didn't say NSFW because... All I said was I googled nude yoga and yeah, I, I knew everybody was going to It says nude yoga right in the title. Yeah. I'm surprised somebody didn't comment and say <laughs> I was talking about the comment earlier that you and I were reading. Oh yeah. I'm trying to come up with a way to say what somebody would say about nude yoga. Like you didn't warn us that there were going to be naked people in nude yoga. You're an asshole. <laughs> I thought they no, were going to have clothes on. Actually, I saw an asshole. <laughs> I actually prefer them with yoga. I was at yoga the other day, so I walk into the door. This girl is smiling at me, right? She's smiling at me. Because she has to? She works there? No, no, she doesn't work there. <laughs> it turns out that I hooked up with her like two or three weeks ago. You don't remember? Well, I, I can't see that far until oh, I get yeah. closer. Plus, I, I, only, I only went out with her once, so I was like, I was like, so did you like, right. ignore her? I'm like, no, no, no. I went and said, hi. Are you taking this? She, she went in front of me in the class. <laughs> no, we had a good conversation. she have yoga pants on? She had yoga pants. So did every other girl and <laughs> one guy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that is my yoga story for this week. Great story, Jared. Great story. Cool story, bro. A quick update on Twitter regarding photography. Uh, the social media giant has announced new photo related features, including tagging and multiple photo upload. Uh, you can now tag up to 10 people in an image without their usernames counting towards your limited 140 characters. And you can now also add up to four photos to each of your tweets, which will automatically create a thumbnail montage when users view their feed. Uh, and when you click on it, it'll actually turn into a slideshow viewing all four photos. Yeah, so... Figured I'd bring it up. I, there, there's going to be the people that complain that, well, Twitter's no longer 140 characters if this doesn't count towards it. I don't really give a shit. Whatever they want to do, they can do. I'm not really sharing photos on Twitter very often. I don't either that much. What I did discover, though, is that a lot of people that have Instagram and let Instagram post to, to uh, Twitter and Facebook automatically, you don't get as much play on Facebook when you upload them directly from Instagram, which doesn't make any sense because they're tied together. It should carry more weight. I well, This is I what I do. Too, this is what I do when I go on Instagram. I take a picture or I put my picture up on Instagram, whether I edited it in Snapseed or whatnot, and I, and I put it up there, and I only put it out onto... Well, I let it automatically go to Tumblr and, and Facebook because I don't really worry. That's just... How do you know you Flickr? How did Tumblr? What'd I say? Tumblr. Yeah, I, didn't say, I said Facebook, didn't I? No, I'm, he's t- saying, do you mean Flickr? You said Tumblr. I said Flickr and Tumblr. 
Oh, well, we didn't know you had a Tumblr. I think that's what yeah. We're... It's like Jared Poland or something. I didn't know I had it either. But then oh. it, it works, so I just put <laughs> stuff on it. All so right. so that's what I do. But I independently save the image, put it up on Twitter myself because then it's in line. Yeah. Because months and months ago, Twitter took out the in line posting of. Where, of, you can uh, preview of, where you can preview the image right there. Yeah. They did that because they didn't want Facebook to, you know, because it was Facebook. Instagram. Who owns Facebook. Instagram yeah. owns Facebook. Yeah. Sorry, Facebook owns Instagram. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's that they didn't want them to get more traffic. So, And then when I put it up on Facebook, I upload it separately, and it gets more traction than if I let it update automatically. The only thing I can think of is... Um, the new algorithm, maybe it's because it's considered an app, Instagram. Maybe it just has less pull than an actual photo uploaded directly to Facebook. I don't know. I don't know either. I just, I don't know what this means. I have never uploaded multiple images to Twitter myself. Yeah. Um, I should do that whole thing where you do everything separate. I'm just too lazy and I just do Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything at doesn't, one time. It, and it doesn't take that long, but I think you get more... You definitely get more Twitter you traction do. when you just put the image up because it's right there. Well, on both too. Facebook as well. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, which I, I'm still annoyed that the feature when they when they took out the Instagram preview on Twitter. That's because Twitter is fighting yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is really cool, though. A specific, not a specific, a special effects artist released a bunch of videos that basically turned his kid into an action hero. Uh, he used video effects to make his kid have a lightsaber, uh, a grappling gun, <laughs> a ton of other, you know, cliche action figure weapons. Um, they're very short, 20 second or less videos, and it looks like he's been putting out new videos almost every week. Um, really funny stuff, just really quick and to the point. Uh, father of the year right here, this guy. I mean, the one, for example, he has like a lightsaber, and it just automatically turns into one. Jeez. And the kid's in the store, and he like chops a shelf in half, and That's like funny. flames go everywhere. And the kid's like, whoopsie. I need to, I need to watch that one. Yeah, I but, wonder how he gets his kid to like act these scenes out, though. Cause, and it's no, good, too. It's really good, yeah. The thing well, I think is the, oh sorry go ahead uh, the thing I think is the best is it looks like it's just filmed like an iPhone as far as quality yeah is. it's like terrible and quality video t- terrible quality and whatever effects that he does it matches and it looks cool and like that's that. why I think it looks so real you know when you match your your video like that my my favorite is going back to one of the earliest viral videos is the kid in Get high school in front of the camera he's he just puts the camera on and he takes a broomstick and he starts darth mauling it this is before oh, yeah, youtube yeah, yeah. i don't even remember you got to look this one i up. know you're talking about and this kid was he was a larger kid so he was one of the nerds that probably got made fun of quite a bit and then somehow he filmed himself doing this and didn't take the tape and i think somebody uploaded it so it was probably <laughs> e-bombs world back in the day but <laughs> oh, it's, what happened to that site? e-bombs world is still there but they missed the boat yeah Somehow they missed the boat. Mm-hmm. They had that milk and cereal one that I used to watch. Milk and cereal, cereal and milk, <laughs> cereal and milk, milk and cereal, milk and cereal, cereal and milk. Cere- a is for apple, B is for bo- whatever. You remember that, was a that classic. one? Yeah, we, the in two high school, guys I think without the shirts on. There. Yeah, that was just funny. I just love that one. We used to say it in like a cafeteria, cafeteria every time we had milk and cereal. <laughs> milk and cereal. Oh, whatever. That was the funniest one. So those two. But yeah, you got you to gotta go watch that one with that kid. I've, I've probably seen it, but it just doesn't ring a bell right because now. Because he's really going at it like he's Darth Maul. Yeah. I'm sure it's on YouTube now. Oh, absolutely. It yeah. is. All right. Go ahead. Uh, where were we? Videographer Daniel Stupin released a new time-lapse video of Coral that features 150,000 22 megapixel raw exposures in a single 4K video, which unfortunately is displayed only at 1080 online. Uh, It's only a three and a half minute video, but each frame consists of three to 12 focus stacked macro stills, which is why he took so many images in the first place. Um, It took his laptop three weeks to process all the images and three months to shoot each minute of this film. So he pretty much spent almost an entire year filming this three minute short film, but it's breathtaking, you know, cool. definitely a must see video. Uh, it's definitely well worth it in the end. Hopefully he gets some traction out of this. Yeah, hopefully he gets something out of it. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why he edited it on a laptop in the first place because that's probably why it took him three weeks to process it. But yeah, yeah maybe next time do a supercomputer or some, something like that. Uh, there's a fairly new coffee shop in South Korea that is shaped like a Rolex camera and it was opened by an ex-helicopter pilot in the Air Force, something you just have to see to believe. It's really cool looking. It's just a giant Where's camera. it at? Uh, South Korea. I got to go there. Yeah. Not North Korea. Not North Korea. <laughs> South Korea. Because if South I go to Korea. North Korea, I have to get a Kim Jong-un haircut. <laughs> He's mandated that all men have haircuts just like him. Yeah, and you, your fro would be gone in like a second. I'd be in North Korea. Wow, that's crazy stuff. It is. Anyway, what else? 
Uh, and we have a couple more celebrity couple. Uh, Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard have. First off, how did Dax Shepard score Kristen blows Bell my mind in too, the man. first place? The blows guy, my the, mind. Idiocracy. You ever see that movie? Uh, I saw bits and pieces. You've of it. probably seen Idiocracy, right? Uh, probably same thing. Bits and pieces. It, it's stupid, but well, uh, he's in a lot Owen, of those type not movies. Owen, not Owen Wilson, but the his brother. brother. I know that dude Luke from old Wilson. School. Yeah, Luke Wilson's in it. It the premise of it was funny. And the movie wasn't the worst in the world, but it's pretty bad. But Idiocracy, I watched it one day. It was pretty interesting. But Dax Shepard's in that. Well, he always plays like kind of the same role every time, I feel like. Yes, mentally challenged in some way or another. <laughs> Does he play that role? It, just slow. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so that, that couple, they've sought out to stop the paparazzi from taking photos of celebrities' kids because they themselves now have a one-year-old. Uh, their approach is instead of stopping the paparazzi themselves, they want media outlets to stop buying and using the images so the paparazzi will stop getting paid and in turn hopefully stop hustling to get the photo. Um, so here's where it gets good. They sat down with uh, paparazzi agency owner Steve Ginsburg and celebrity reporter Jew. Christian Zimmerman to Jew. discuss the topic. Always Jews. <laughs> Jews, 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 running the media world for a change. <laughs> Jews. Speak of yourself. I, whatever. Uh, now, basically, the couple fought for ethics where the agency and reporter simply replied with business is business and celebrity kids sell. It's a constant argument, though, in this video and interesting one to watch. Now, the agency owner actually admitted to there being a problem with photographers and that they need to be regulated, but it's something hard to achieve. Uh, one of the first magazines, though, that agreed to join Kristen and Dax on their mission and stop publishing unauthorized okay, photos magazine? of celebrity kids is close is People magazine. Uh, they agreed to stop publishing photos of kids taken by paparazzi photographers and only published photos that were pre-approved pre -approved by the parents. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to stop. I don't think so either. And that's kind of what the uh, paparazzi guy was saying here. Right. Too. But but Taking steps, it's like what Dak Shepard said is that the kid didn't sign up to be kids of famous parents. No. So and that's, that's kind of what Please respect not putting them out there. Exactly. Because we don't want them. You can take all the pictures you want of us, but please don't put our kids out there. Yeah, they didn't choose that life. It, it's, a, it's a safety thing. We don't want them there. We want them to be you know as normal as possible. It's not going to stop. The paparazzis are not even... <sighs> Majority of paparazzis aren't even photographers. They are button pushers that are opportunists that are just looking to be on TMZ and to be the next asshole. Make some money. Like when that whole, um, uh, what the, the, the Kanye the, West the Christ thing? thing, what's his name? Kanye West. No, no. Christ Freedom! <laughs> Mel Gibson. Yeah. Mel Gibson. <laughs> the whole Mel Gibson thing where the guy was chasing him in his car and Mel Gibson gets out of the car to come up and be like, Please don't chase us. No, uh, Mel Gibson's an asshole for what he did, first and foremost. Don't want anybody getting upset like they did last week about the Terry Richardson thing, thinking I was defending him. Uh, Mel Gibson comes off like a straight-up uh, racist pig with what he did, right? I'd then, say so. Can it change? Sure. Would, you, would I give the guy a second chance? Sure. I don't give a shit. Do you love his movies, though? I did, right. Those movies <laughs> were good, right? So what, that's not the point here. The point is that everybody deserves some kind of respect. I don't care what the person has done in the past. If they fucked up earmuffs, they fucked up, <laughs> right? They've done it. So what? I, I'm a big fan of if people mess up, you give them another chance. Yeah. Within I, reason. Firm believer of that, too. So, yeah, I, don't, I try not to hold grudges for... Because there's no point. Yeah. There's really no point. But anyway, the guy gets out of the car. Mel Gibson gets out of the car, walks up to the guy, and he's like, please don't cut us off. You've been following us at a high rate of speed. You've been doing this. And the guy just starts egging him on. Oh, Mel Gibson, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you beat your wife? Did you curse her off? Did you do this? Are you an asshole? You know? And the guy just kept trying to dig and like dig and dig style. to get a reaction. It's bullshit. It's not journalism. It's assholeism. I agree. I just came up with that one. And who's um, the other dude on 30 Rock that they always uh, egg on all the time? Oh, well, Baldwin. Uh, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Who, by the way, has a great podcast called does he? Here's the Thing. He seems like a really cool dude. He, he does. He seems like he's it's out there, though, with a short fuse, obviously. Definitely, yeah. But he's defending his wife, who so happens to be beautiful and younger. And But... Must yeah, nice. it, it, it gets annoying, I'm sure, having people in your face all the time, snapping your photos, and for what? What's the point? Because the sheeple of the, of the world want to see tabloid news? Because that's what draws people. Good news doesn't draw people, but, but why do you think people react to interesting headlines? 
Why did the headline say, Oprah's pregnant with an alien baby? Because people are going to read it, you know? And, and so it's, it's, it's people, anyway, I don't even remember what the photo story was that you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> Dax Shepard and, yeah. and, and Amanda Bell, Kristen, Kristen Bell. Bell, who's hot and shoots raw in that <laughs> Veronica Mars movie, which I've never seen Veronica Mars. Yeah, I've never seen it either. Personally, but I don't think it's ever going to change. I don't think it's ever going to change, uh, but maybe there's some respectful photographers out there who won't do it, and they'll police themselves into into not letting people do that. But the problem is when they get that one shot and somebody else pays a shit ton of money for it, then that's it. Next, yeah. no, I, I've had enough of that one. Um, what was I going to add to that? I watched a mini documentary actually about paparazzos uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the one... Was that the Grenier one? No, no, no. I know that, that one, the dude from Entourage, Entourage right? yeah. Uh, but they were showcasing how any photo they get of a celebrity, they can make it into some kind of random story. Like, you know, they're just stopping and paying the meter. They could throw that into saying like, oh, they stopped at this place for lunch and a fight happened or something. They could use that photo. It's like any little thing they could use, which is why they're literally following them around all day, just taking pictures. You're not photographers. (laughs) You people that chase people, you're not photographers. You're button pushers. Get a life. And we have two more stories. It's true, though. It is true. I'm sure there are some out there that maybe are... There are some out there who are quality. I can't say for all of them, you know. Right. But the people that chase these people... I, and I, we ran it's, into it's, one of these guys at the concert the couple weeks back. You yep. weren't there. The, the Getty guy. Yeah, I heard about him. Just, you know, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you my opinion. You're going to tell me that you this is your job. This is what you do. You chase these people around and you get these photos. And I'm going to go... We, we sent somebody up to go hang outside of the the lady who just hung herself on her doorknob exactly, yeah. and what are you waiting for the body to come rolling out is that's that a, is that a for. tremendous photo that you have to get because that's the the biggest thing in the world that that's so important that you need to get that photo to get paid that's yeah. not photography that's I, assholeism i saw coverage of Mick Jagger's you know, was it his wife or girlfriend? It was his, it was his girl, his, long-time girlfriend. Long-time girlfriend at her house after she passed and the, the ambulance was there. There was literally like 30 photographer, no, paparazzi people, paparazzos that were hanging out and just waiting and waiting Why don't we just call them opportunists? Day. Opportunists. Um, but it's a shame. It's like that kind of stuff. Like, I, obviously that news. photo is going to sell somewhere, like TMZ style stuff, but give them some respect, you know? Yeah. Uh, so again, a couple more stories, digital rev, they put together a parody video featuring a list of 10 ways to annoy a photography snob, uh, it features everything from the photo being like too soft to not shooting manual on P mode, all that kind of stuff. But it's a funny little video that, uh, they put together and it's just something that you guys need to check out. Get a good laugh after this story that we just talked about. And then we want to end it with, uh, you just heard something about Apple and it was just a patent filing. filing. A patent. It's a patent filing. So patent, patent filing. <laughs> and it, it just talked about bayonet style lenses for, we don't know what they're for, but one could assume that they're looking to do lenses for iPhones. It would make sense when Steve Jobs said that they wanted to rev or change photography or, or become a major player in the photography world. They've done it. More photos are taken with the iPhone every day than anything else. Yeah. You know, so they've got that except for with hipsters. And, they, and probably edited on a Mac as well. Right. Well, a lot of them are. Yeah. But the, it, it's it makes sense that whether they buy an Oli clip or something like that or they come up with an actual bayonet that puts better lenses and better... I mean, they're going to get better and better sensors. There's no reason why they shouldn't continue to push photography with phones. And I'm just thinking back to the whole paparazzi and the opportunist thing. Does that make these people photographers? Well, if it's a starting point. If they can take pictures with this, they're not doing it for a living. Some people do. But I, it's going to be very interesting to see if you can change lenses and if they can keep it flat still on the front Mm -hmm. so if they recede there's a whole lot that has to go into it but i would like to say that there should be a company like nikon or canon that tries to become the official lens of them but knowing apple they'll create their own product and just stick with that yeah they definitely will knowing them yep and that's it for photo news this week all right that was a rough and tumble photo news (laughs) we got into a fight we (laughs) yelled at people we hugged and made up uh, it's so a lot of emotions going through that. We, we, <laughs> that you news. made me spell road reel 12, my road reel 12 <laughs> times. Oh, thanks, Sutter. We need to keep moving. 
I can't believe we're that much in. Already. Well, that's because you you like because you interrupted me you, so you, many times. You interrupted me a lot. <laughs> anyway, so let's get into this Matt Beck interview. I had Matt Beck in here. He called me on the phone and and he was asking for advice. And the reason I was I would give him advice is because I saw what he was doing. Anytime somebody takes initiative and doesn't come to me and go be like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I am out of inspiration. Anytime I get those messages like, How do you shoot something if there's nothing in the in my city to shoot there's always something yeah there's always something you have to come up with it but anyway the positive side of it is i decided to help him out matt because he already took the initiative to do something he already started to grow and i saw places where he could use some tips and just share his story out there so i asked him to come in for raw talk we finally made it happen he came in we talked about everything there was about how he started the gear that he uses why he's doing a podcast how he's producing four or five pieces of content a week what he's doing and how it's benefiting him and how he's starting to become something in the hair in like not become something as in the hair industry but become the authority where if he says something about a company and the company doesn't like it they're reaching out to him to bring him in for a discussion because there's possible advertisement plays there's so many different options and there are things that we even forgot to talk or that we talked about after the fact but I'll save that till after you hear this interview and that's what you're going to do right now and when we come back we've got gear of the week we've got wheel of fro and then we're going to move on to the end of the show. Sounds good. All right, so enjoy this interview with Matt Beck. All right, so I get a lot of phone calls. I get a lot of emails. Well, not so much phone calls. I don't like getting them as much, but I get a lot of emails from people in the photo community, in the online community, looking to, to get tips and tricks for checking how they're doing on YouTube to see what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. Well, I got a message from Matt Beck, who is a, in New Hope PA, right? New Hope? Yeah. Yeah, so he's from New Hope or resides in New Hope at this point, and he runs a hair salon, started a YouTube channel after following what what I've done out there, and he sent me an email, and then I called him on the phone because I, I wanted to throw some tips at him real quick, and I was like, you know what? You're local. Uh, you've got all of these questions about a business, about, well, maybe not so much about the business, but about branding and marketing and doing YouTube v videos and all of these things that, that I, that I kind of do. So very similar to when I would sit down with Gary Vee and get some consulting from him, I figured, why not come on air, ask me all the questions that you have, and this will be one big marketing brain dump consulting type session that I know is going to help everybody out there because it doesn't matter if you're a photography business, you do video, you do audio, you uh, cut hair, you fix cars, you're an accountant. It doesn't matter. All of this stuff translates, translates in one way or another to what you're doing. So Matt, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, I think it's funny because I now I'm like, all right, what am I asking Jared? Because since I got here this morning, you haven't let me talk or ask questions. No, I didn't let you talk pretty much ever. I'm like, save your right. questions until you're on air because I want everybody to hear these questions. And do you want to bring out your phone so no, you don't forget? I, you know what they are? No, I'm good. I want to start from the beginning of of how we started, um, how I kind of started my channel, and I want to just kind of work through and and I'm hoping that I think for me it was it's been a while I've been trying to connect with you for a while so I've kind of figured things out a little bit um, but watching what you've done here and watching you every week it just helps me kind of build the channel so so tell people what the channel is so basically it's free salon education is the uh, the YouTube channel um, I do own a hair salon in New Hope Pennsylvania so I have a whole staff that that works with me on the channel which is really cool um, and we just we started producing basically what happened was I been an educator in the hair industry for 10 years and so, so you get paid to teach. I also. get paid to teach. Yeah. And, um, it just became one of those things where I felt that everything is moving internet and, uh, YouTube is definitely, um, for me, probably going to replace TV. I would assume someday. I think I watch your channel when I get home, uh, every Tuesday night, as opposed to turning the TV on, you cool. know what I mean? So I feel like I enjoy certain people on YouTube. So, uh, what I wanted to do was create, uh, free content for hairdressers and in return build a business around it and um what happened was i had started this channel i had no subscribers nothing and uh one of my clients came in and he said have you seen this guy he has a big fro and he does photography stuff and i think you would like him and maybe you should build something like this and i i guess he went to the same school as you so um so he showed me your channel and then right then i was like yeah that's exactly 
for me, it was, you were doing a podcast, which was cool. I, I was in radio. I will talk about that. Um, but so I love the podcast because I think you reach people that way and it keeps people up to date. And then just, just how you were educating was different. It wasn't boring. I'm not a photographer and I was, I've watched probably, you have a lot of videos, so I haven't watched them all. That would be a little weird, I think, but probably, yeah, but, um, but I've watched a lot of them and, and they're entertaining and you simplify everything. Fun and informative is right. what I have lived by. So you have your channel. You started with zero subscribers. How many do you have now? Almost, well, we probably hit 30,000 today. Did you really? Yeah. Last time I looked, it was at 12, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, when I reached out to you, I think I had 3,000. So we're, really? we're gaining 9,000 a month right now. And this, these are the things I want to talk to you because I don't know. In business, it's hard because I think you don't, you don't know how well you're doing. Yeah. You just keep competing with yourself. So I knew you had a YouTube channel. That's why I reached out to you because I don't know if 600,000 views a month is good. I don't know. I mean, I assume it's pretty that's good. That's pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's very good. And so it's in, not far off from what I'm doing. Uh, well, I do more than that by almost, well, I'm not going to go into those numbers, yeah, but I do fine. more than that. Yeah. But, you know, I've got a lot more subscribers. I would like to be doing more video views. What do you, what do you attribute the growth to? coming from well what's what really happened and um i think first off you can't get free education for salons so do you find that most of your readers are people in the salon industry no and i and i so yeah yeah and i would say probably about three thousand of the first views i think become come from a lot of hairdressers we had a video kind of explode it was a haircut similar to the one i have right now i think your uh your guy steven Sutter, right? Yeah. He, um, I think he wears that type of haircut. Nah, we did a video. Hipster did, haircut. Right. So we did a video like that. It's very you should popular. Do haircuts for hipsters. Right. Yeah. So we, we, uh, I did a haircut like that and it got 300, it's now at 600,000 views in three months. So uh. that's contributing to the 600,000 views a month right now. Yeah. And then, you know, so it's one of those things where it's going to die off. I know that this isn't but what did you do in that video that was so popular that crossed it over away from just people in the salon world to mainstream? Well, I've, with my background of things that I've done, I was able to create good enough content um, with different camera angles and um, being able to, you know, I just spent money creating content and the content is good. It's better than, um, most other people. Most well, how, how much are you putting out? How much money? No content. No oh, money. But like, how much money. in content uh, are you putting out? Uh, we put out about four or five videos a week. So that's following the method that I talked about before course, where yeah. I did a video a day. That's what still, I wanted to do. It's just a little... Well, yeah, but four to five is great. That, do you yeah. find that people are watching each video that you put up? Yeah. I mean, we're now, with the 30,000 subscribers, we're able to... I put up a video like our podcast I put up Monday um, and it's had like, I think 1400 views, which is, you know, for a podcast for hairstylists, which no one's done um, to get that many views is pretty cool. So you've got, you, you're putting that on YouTube. Are you also putting that on the podcast networks and everything? We as did well? talk about that. That was one of those things you told me to stop talking about when we were on the phone. Um, it, I'm using right now, uh, I use SoundCloud, which you said um, there was a better company yeah, you felt. Lipson. Yeah, a which lot I of, forgot. I mean, I think um, the majority of the podcasting world out there is using them. Okay. It, it's a very good service, and, and it aggregates all of your stuff out there to iTunes, uh, to Stitcher, to all the different places, okay. and it gives you stats and analytics. So you pay 20 bucks a month for the for 400 megs okay uh and what basically what happens is you upload something if it's 80 megs it takes away from your 400 but each week or something it replenishes so it's not like you can only have 400 megs total and then you have to keep paying more yeah. it replenishes so you get more space they need to specify that better i think they do need to specify because when i first did it i'm like what do you mean i only get 400 megs i, I put up this many videos and it's going to cost me more and right now that's not something that they do well on the site but it's what the major podcasting people are using out there. Right. And I think uh, that'll be cool because right now I'm running the, the RSS feed to iTunes. So mm -hmm. we, we, you can get it on iTunes, but it's just, I, there's not much traffic on our audio. Right. But it, it's still good to have because yeah. you never know if people are going to find it. But what is the name of the video that, that went viral? 600,000 uh, views. It says it's Pompadour haircut. Um, you know, did somebody post it somewhere? 
to give it traction? No. Or do you just, think people are just... Just YouTube. They're just searching that yeah. out. What were the tags and keywords that Well, that was, that was one big thing, and that's a good thing we can talk about because um, at first, when I first launched the channel, I was like, you know, putting up, it was before freesaloneducation.com, but it was, uh, you know, gratitude education, haircut, something. It was very generic, and there was no... And no one looks for gratitude education. No one cares. Right. No one knows what that is. It doesn't mean anything. Right. So um, I kind of, I've been watching a lot of people on YouTube to see how they word things to, and I'm sure you can help me with that because yeah. I think it is wording. And I know that you sent me a message. Why do you capitalize everything? Well, yeah, I, I was looking yeah. at some of your original videos and everything was capitalized and it didn't have, it didn't make sense because I know. I'm like, why is, why are you putting this in there? Why are you putting that in there? I'm like, just get to the point of what it's about. Right. So you it, made that change and that I'm, worked? I'm working. The, the recent videos, I haven't capitalized everything. I think for me, it was like, watch this, please. You know, like, hey, haircut is coming, you know? So yeah. I wanted people to, uh, it just to stand out. But I don't think that necessarily worked. I don't even know why it happened. I just started capitalizing Right, it's just everything. one of those things. But yeah. this pompadour haircut thing, Yeah. You what, what were some of the keywords that you would it use said, in that? pompadour, um, how to cut a pompadour haircut. Um, and then I usually use like a dash and then I separate it with, um, how to style a pompadour. And then I think that was it. And, and in the keywords in, on the back end of YouTube, um, you know what the tag words, the tags, I haven't really done, I have laid out tags, but I don't do specific tags. I would just throw them in there. They can't hurt. Yeah. You can't really find tags anymore on YouTube. They used to let you see what each video had. Yeah. So I could look at what videos were successful and look at their tags. I don't think they let you do that anymore. Okay. Um, but they still say they're effective. Um, yeah, that was, I was trying to read, you know how like YouTube, um, I don't know if they do this right away, but when you became, when I became a YouTube partner, they give you like ideas a sure. little bit. They, they write you, a, there's a, a YouTube guide, partner guide. Right. And, um, so I read that and, um, and it was, it talked about how tags are, you know, a good thing, but they look at the title first. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's like reading a book. Yeah. Right. So title and then description, which what I noticed about you and that I don't do because I'm not a writer. Um, uh, and I'm far from a writer okay. too. You'll realize that if you read my spelling. So, um, but what I love is that you put almost a blog in every description. Which I don't know if is, is right or wrong. Personally. I don't either, but I, I enjoy it because I think when you get the when you get the email out, um, it's, it's a full on description. Like if I'm, it is. I'm like, Oh, I know exactly well, I what put this put the information video. right there. But let me ask you in your descriptions, are you trying to send people anywhere else? Do you have your website that you yes. send people to? Yeah. So is the hope to get them to watch the video on the blog or for more information, go back to the blog? Um, well, basically what I wanted with the website, it's tough, I think. And, and please help me with this too. But, um, it's your ha You have two things. You, I think you push kind of people to YouTube from your site. Is that true or no? Well, I, I push them to my site to watch the YouTube videos generally. On your site? On my site. Okay. But if they're on YouTube, obviously they're watching it there. Right. What I do in the description is the very first line of the description is the link back to that blog post. Okay. And that gives people the option or the ability to go back and click there. Also, sometimes before the video starts, hey, please subscribe to my channel if you... or. or Something like that. You know, yeah. hey, subscribe to the channel, click this box, you'll get this, you'll get that. Stuff like that is important, I think. Um, well, and I'm thinking about making the, because right now I use a different company to make my website, but it's a similar company to what you use. Um, we won't name that name, but um, I'm thinking about switching to Squarespace because I think I like the ease of the, um, the links. Right now, I don't know if it's the way that the HTML5 works with my site builder, right. but the tags are so long and they're complicated. Mm -hmm. So you can't just put like, um, you know, salongratitude.com slash picture or oh, see, slash I, haircut. I'm using WordPress for my site for Frono's photo. My personal photo site is done through Squarespace. Oh, I thought you used, okay. Not for the, not for Frono's photo. So it's WordPress. It's, well, That's it's a why. custom WordPress. I bought a theme and we then coded the theme to make some changes and tweaks that we wanted to. And okay. in there, you can go ahead and, and change the you know it would be fronosphoto.com slash and then i have the ability to make it whatever i want to make it okay so that makes sense you're are you monetizing the videos that youtube's giving you the ability to do yes yeah so i mean that's pretty that's always been good but for me that was that's more uh, i bonus. do it it's a bonus well you, yeah. you don't force people to sit through the the full ad you give no, them no, the no. ability the to 15 seconds or whatever i think do you let them skip it do yeah, you have the true yeah, view they, selected? They can skip it. Yeah, yeah. because I, I personally think that when you're building your brand, 
if if you force people to watch 30 seconds or 15 seconds without the ability to skip yeah they're gone yeah if, if they're not if they're not established if you're not established and they haven't you haven't earned their trust yet right then they're not going to sit there and watch it so i'm not looking to personally make the money off of youtube money right you know, i don't want you know yes the ad money is nice it's a nice little paycheck at the end of each month and at the end of the year it's, it adds up to be nice right it could be a lot more if I force people to sit through my videos, but I don't want to force them to do that. I want them to watch it, end up on my site, or keep coming back for more. Right. And I think for me, it was like for me, the, that little YouTube thing, like people, I think people think um, you need to make money or you're going to make money off of YouTube. And it's not, you don't, YouTube is the, the engine I, for me that drives the traffic that allows them to go to my site. YouTube basically is giving you the ability to create advertisements for yourself. Exactly. Every video you upload is an ad for you. Right. Whether you're not paying for it and what YouTube gets out of it is more content that people come and see. Right. I, I have a question here, which is, has it been, you, you know, you work, you own a business. How have you been able to take the time to go ahead and make four to five videos a week? Yeah. And has it been worth it? Well, if you ask my uh, fiance, it's uh well, I have a six-year-old kid as well. So we've, um, you know, it's, it's hard. But I also, this has allowed me the freedom to not travel as much and teach the other way that I was teaching. I have a steady gig. I do a couple, couple weeks uh, or once every couple of weeks. But um, this is great for me because, first off, I love doing it. So I make the time. I do nothing but work. So, um, you know, that's really all it is. I, I'm up all night editing. I, I know what that's you know, like. She watches TV. I edit and right next to her on the couch. Well, you at know? least you're together. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, you know, and I think people, like when people say they don't have enough time to do things, it's, for me, that's just insane because I think if you want to do something, you can make time to do it. And Well, I think it's pretty evident that you started with zero, which is where we all started. And now you're at 30,000 and you're doing roughly 600,000 a yeah. month. And if, if you didn't have that viral video, what do you think it would be? Um, I think we could take that and probably put it in half. I think, I think eventually, but I mean, it's still, it's staying strong. Which and is great. now I got another video that's starting to take off. And what's that one? It's like the Jennifer Lawrence haircut. See, it, see and anytime then, you get and play the celebrity game, I know. people are going to find Jennifer Lawrence and they want to know, see, you need to just make that a series and just do right. that. And I mean, the, the Jennifer Aniston haircut and, and then you right. do a Oscar. See, okay, now we're going. You ready? Now we're going. Now I got ideas. The Oscars <laughs> right. were just happening, yeah, right? Yeah. You have a Twitter following at all? Um, Twitter's tough for me, but because again, I'm not a writer. All right, not really, a big deal. Well, but it's 140 characters. We have 300 characters. followers on Twitter. All right, so. Right. Anyway, what you could do is sit and film yourself watching the Oscars. Okay. Uh, and you can break down the pictures, uh, break down each haircut that comes in. Right. And turn it into what, you know, an Oscar video. The, what did they wear? What's their hair? Because forget right. what they wore, but it's about the haircut. Right. So you can do a thing for each one of their haircuts. And now if Getty Images is allowing people, which we're going to talk about, I guess, somewhere, uh, Getty Images allows people to embed Vid, uh, photos, right? Is that what it was? You don't have to talk. <laughs> they allow you to embed photos now. Um, maybe you'd be able to grab some of those celebrity photos and showcase that, but you're not allowed to put it in your video because then you, you wouldn't be allowed to make money off of it. But something like that. Right. Here's, a, here's what they wore at the Oscars. You want to see how it's done? And you just bring in a model. And you, have, you do her hair that way, or you do the guy's hair that way, and you go, this is the hair that they walked the red yeah. carpet with. And it's Jennifer Lawrence's hair from the Oscars right. or whatever you did. And you will see that. I mean, that's obviously why you're you know, 9,000 new subscribers a month is very right. good. And we are um, like, so during our podcast, instead of doing like news, industry news, because the hair industry doesn't have that much news that right. often. We don't have techie things that come out every week, but celebrities change their hair. So that's a part of our our whole entire podcast. So like we we start off, we answer the questions from, from YouTube. Then... Um, at the end, we go through, we show pictures of the celebrities, um, what the hair change they made that week, and we, and we break it down each of the styles. Sure. I mean, I'm curious to see how many people are watching, just non-fans will Full. actually sit and watch the podcast. Right. Uh, but do you find that industry people are watching it? Yeah. I mean, we get posts from people like showing it on their TV, like sitting in the living room. Like that's, I love that stuff. Yeah. I mean. No, that's I, cool. I mean, you're, you're building the hell out of it, which is great. Um, where was I going to go? I had a, so are you going to create a product that you can sell digitally? So listen, so what, 
so that's one thing I want to, I definitely have decided I want to start working on. Um, it's, I got to figure out, cause I know that even you bring in a crew for your video guides and everything. Yeah. Which and I my crew's local. So already, you're in New Hope. They're right, not far off right. from you. So I'm thinking, um, you know, eventually I think that that's, that's the way, um, I have, where I've kind of twisted what I've, I've taken from what you've done is, um, I have an online store as well. Um, I talked to your t-shirt guy though. He's got the t-shirts. Uh, um, I'm picking them up this weekend. Nice. So I'm um, really excited for that. Great deal, by the way. Thank you. And, um, so, but not just t-shirts on the store. I, I partner with the scissor company. I'm selling scissors on the store. Um, so we create the videos using the scissors and the hairdressers can go and buy the stuff there. And now I partner with another company, um, that's allowing me to put their whole catalog on there. So we're using the products in the videos and selling And you're them. making affiliate money off of yeah. that. Yeah. And I'm selling them for cheaper so that hairdressers can afford them. Yeah. You know? So I'm trying to get better deals because the companies get free advertising with me. I sell their product on my site. They drop ship for me. And that's, that's great. That's how I'm trying to work. And then at some point you're going to get to the place where it's like, I can't use your free stuff anymore. You need to pay me some money. Right. So because you're getting a lot, this is the most uh, reach you're getting. You're not going to get much better reach than this other than right. people going to a salon. They're watching my videos. Right. So that's good. And I watched one of your videos. I don't, you know, what do I have to say about, I mean, I've watched more than one, but there was one that grabbed my attention and that was the hair cutting. One. They're all hair cutting ones. Uh, it was the one with the scissors. Okay. Where you explained the $80 shitty scissor yeah. versus the $900. Right, yeah. Mass. What's the nine hundred dollar one called? Um, it's a Mizutani. Yeah, type. Mizutani yeah. scissors, man. <laughs> right. That's. I only want my hair to be cut with Mizutani. <laughs> Don't let anybody try anything else other than Mizutani. Anything else is a knockoff. Um, you won't have split ends. Let's put it that well, way. Well, I watched it and it made sense because you made a video that showed a close up of a girl getting her hair cut with shitty scissors. Yeah. Then you're like, and this is what the good scissors do. And I was like. Oh, it's not bending and breaking the hair. It's actually cutting it. Right. So I learned something there. And to me, that's what's really important when watching a video, especially when I have no interest in it. Right. But I sat there and went, oh, that's fun and informative. Keep it short. Yeah, on your videos, how long are they generally? Well. Sans the podcast. Yeah, we do. Um, we do the. Uh, I put out one long video a week, not the podcast, but like one. Um, full instructional video that's about 20, 25 minutes. That's with a white background, zoomed in on the haircut, a couple different angles. We wear GoPros on our heads um, during the cutting it's video. for first person so, shooter. Yeah, so you can see what we're doing. Sorry, it's the first person cutter. <laughs> right. Just not so, emo style because you don't want to cut yourself and bleed. <laughs> right. So we, um, and then I try to put out a bunch of quick, quicker tip videos that are under, you know, three to five minutes. Yeah, that's perfect. I mean, you're running the model that I ran straight up from the beginning. Well, I said to myself, okay, well, first off, you're, you're having fun doing this. So I, I love that. Um, you had 250,000 subscribers when I started watching you. And, um, and I was like, you know, that's, I want to build that audience. And then when I have that voice at that point, like we, <laughs> we did, I know that they won't watch this. So we did a, a podcast and we, we brought up a huge issue in the beauty industry, which was one of these things where I won't talk about that because it's not interesting, but it was a huge issue. We brought it up on our podcast. We had a sit down talk with a corporation, a huge corporation that called us up and said, we need to talk to you because of the podcast that we put out like that. Were is, they happy or were no, they, they were not happy? They were not. They with weren't the way happy. That, yeah. So well, go in. Who are they? So I can't say because I, I but what did you say that made them not happy? Um, I said the facts of, and my opinion on the situation. In my opinion. Right. In my opinion in my, is what you preface it with every time because that is your opinion. Right. They can't get you after you say in my opinion yeah. because you're not stating facts. Right. So it was one of those things where for me. I, w I just looked at myself all last night because this happened yesterday. I was like, this is working. Like, well, what this, did they say? What did you say about so, the product? Uh, um, I didn't say anything. Well, basically what happens, um, I'll get into it a little bit. So uh, hair salon products, you can only buy at a hair salon, right? Like Vidal Sassoon and mm, well, who's Vidal's, that guy? Like uh, Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell. Yeah, all like that stuff. Um, you know, all, the, all these, the main brand products. So right now you can only get them from the hair salon. Technically, yes. So um, there are stores that are carrying them, but they're not supposed to. It's kind of a uh, black market or diverted type product, whatever. Came from so, India. Right. In so my opinion. They, uh, right. So they, um, uh, there's a website now. One of the biggest distributors of professional products who only sells the hair salons decided that they're now going to sell retail online. Mm-hmm. So 
instead of selling to the salons that they're selling to, which they're still going to do, they're just also going to sell to consumers. So for me, it was initially, in my opinion, taking away from salons. I mean, if I'm selling the product, I go buy from them and I'm trying to sell to my customer and they're selling to my customer online. Sure. It seemed like a thing. So now we've worked it out. I had the conversation with the, uh, the company yesterday. So, you know, I think... What'd you work out? Well, just I got more facts about it. I got their opinion about it. But it, yeah, go ahead. Right. And then I talked to another person last night and got another uh, side and opinion of it. So it's just one of those things. I'm not trying to be 60 minutes of the hair world, mm-hmm. but it became one of those things where it was like, all right, well, I guess my voice, you're, you're who would have be- thought? So here's the thing. Yeah. You've become the authority in the field for this. Right. If there's not a lot of other people in there, they turn to you for your opinion. We know this, like Steven gets emails over here, Eckert, because he's on the podcast. He has gained some authority because he gives his information out each and every week. Even Steven Sutter sitting here, I got an email from a, you didn't know this, uh, Steven, that I got an email for Sutter Mm -hmm. from a, uh, somebody who is, they do down South or somewhere in the below Maryland, they shoot houses. Mm Mm-hmm. And the guy wanted to take one of the things I said about realtors and share it with all his realtors <laughs> about it. And then he's like, by the way, can you connect me with Steven just in case I need some houses shot up north? Nice. So because this kid who's 18 is sitting here in my loft talking yeah. on my freaking podcast, he's gaining authority in the field. Right. Because you're st- people are looking to you as a... as you don't have to go to school. You don't have to have anything. If you have a voice and you're giving out quality information, you've gained authority. And this can right. happen in any field. And I love hearing that you talk about this. And the fact that they're listening and they're upset that you said something means you're doing something right. Right. You also, I, I have down here haters. Do you have people that hate Oh, I want to talk to you about this as well. This is the hardest, when, especially when you're trying to do something great. Like you put out content con- constantly for nothing. People don't have to pay anything. Generally, it's free. Generally. And they can buy something to support you. Right. Um, so it's one of those things where, especially when the video, the pompadour haircut. 600,000 people watch it. You're going to get a lot of more. Yeah, 200,000 haters. You know, it was like all of a sudden, you know, people, people are talking about how, you know, th- the worst things you could possibly imagine are being said to you on YouTube. And you're like, I don't... I, it's, it's honestly like you... And you get great comments all day, which is great. Yeah. But that one that hits right before like I quit looking at the comments on that video I don't answer them I don't and I <laughs> See, try to answer everyone but well I'll tell you four five six months into what I was doing well it was more like a year and a half in or a year to a year and a half where I started to be really affected by comments I was looking at them and and which I try to answer as many as possible right. the problem is when you try to answer as many as possible that means you read more of them and then you start reading the bullshit that haters are putting up and it affects you because yeah. you may get a hundred positives and you get one negative and you want to respond to those people when you should really be responding to the positive people. The right. best thing you can do is either delete it, block them if they're just totally asinine because it's your channel. Yeah. If you don't want to hear their voice and you don't like what they had to say, it's your choice to get them out of there. Okay. Or what's going to happen is the people that follow you will start to comment back to that person and take the reins there, yeah. which means that they're infighting on your channel. Uh, and that's enough. Every once in a while, I'll put somebody in their place when it's time to put them in their place. Right. But that doesn't happen because you're best off ignoring the haters. But you know you've made it when they start hating. Yeah. It's definitely the the haters have started and we it's one of those things where now I get that I well I used to get an email with every subscriber that happened and then Oh yeah, you turn that off. Yeah, I had to turn that off. I still get off when the comments come in because I, I, I like to that. try yeah. to monitor. I mean, I get hundreds and hundreds of comments a day, which yeah. means hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of emails a day that come right. in. Uh, I learned very early on that I turned off my notification on the iPhone because my pocket would <laughs> vibrate and ding every yeah 12 seconds and then i was feeling all tense um so you have the podcast these people are listening now did this company did it did you resolve this amicably yeah i think um i mean we're gonna we shoot the podcast every friday morning before the salon opens so um you know we're gonna readdress it they did ask me to remove the video and the the one thing for me um even when we shot the video it was very quick we were very quick to jump on there and talk about this situation so for me, it was like, all right, well, maybe I would have adjusted a couple of things I said anyways. Um, but what what did you say? Did you, you weren't stating facts. You were stating in my opinions. Right. Then you don't have to take that down. No, I don't have to. And they even said, you know, you don't have to take it down. Yeah, but no we shit. would suggest. Why would they suggest? 
Well, because here's what the other thing. What did it do thing. bad for so them? So I've taught in the industry for 10 years. Uh-huh. I've taught for this company. Oh, you've taught for them. Yeah. So you can use it as a leveraging tool then. Right. You can use it. Be like, you know what? I'll take this one down, but know that I'm going to share my opinion. Well, and if right. you guys do something out of line, that's on you. I'm bringing it up because I have a voice. Right. And people need to know when something is going wrong in the industry. They shouldn't be able to strong arm you to take that down. Right. And that's what I said. I've said, you know what? Based on a couple of things, there are ways I would have gone about it differently. Um, so, you know, I'm going to take it down. But... I'm going to readdress the situation and I'm still going to give my opinion. I don't, and, and I'm, I built this great thing. I don't have to listen to anyone anymore. Yeah. I have the, the ability to create whatever I want. So now. are you getting calls from people to come and teach yeah. at their salon more? Yeah, I was just in Virginia a couple of weeks ago. Is that a direct uh, effect of putting these videos up online? Y- yeah. I mean, I, we get, I'm sure you get it too. It's a lot of people requesting you, but that it doesn't actually happen, you know? So we're, we're starting to get that traffic a little bit. People, you know, somebody from Utah just sent me a message. They were like, can we, we want to get you in our salon? But you know what? Um, those are the, for me, because I have the store and the scissor sales and all of that, I'm really looking to, I love that. I don't really like this weekend. I have to go to the biggest hair show it's in New York at the Javits Center. Yep. I'm teaching two classrooms there this weekend. And um, uh, like, I don't want to have to do that as much. No, I'll, but it, it's still it great to get out. a certain amount of money, yeah. But I'll tell you, it's great to get out. Whether right. it, And mostly sometimes to get paid. Right. Um, other times I'll sit on Skype and talk to a classroom in Utah or Topeka, Kansas or something just because they asked. Right. And I love doing that. Yeah. Uh, I like going and speaking places and I like getting paid to go and speak places. That definitely helps and you build up that brand. Right. Also... When you create your own product, if you invest in that and people want to learn from you and you come out with something that's 300 bucks, you know, 150 bucks, I don't know what the price point is. I don't yeah. know what uh, what the market will with, with hold, withstand, but, and, and I guess the thing is you need a license to cut hair in most places, don't you? Yeah. So... Everywhere right now. So you're forced to go to a school. You can't license people. Um... So does teaching people to cut hair, are they going to buy that and then go to school or is it a gray area? Well, the, the good thing about my industry is, well, it's just like photography. I mean, it's like everything else. Like you learn basics. I'm, you guys went to, photo- did you go to photography school? I did a, I did a two year school. Yeah. So, um, Keep going. so that's really what it is. It's like one of those things where, okay, well it's a, you went to school, but you don't learn everything in school and you don't learn the reality of you learn basic things. So for me, everything I'm doing is all past school. It's, it's learning more and always. So it's people that are already, okay. So you're more of the advanced thing, not the beginners. Like I'm with beginners. So I guess the advanced people are always seeking out new techniques. Right. You have a possibility to do a membership website. Yeah. Which is, which I've thought about, which, well, I've thought of it too. And it's much harder. There's in, I think here, but if you're constantly putting out content that you're selling that's a little different that's more produced you have the ability to sell that you can do that as a membership site for however much you want to charge a month or you could create courses that you sell digitally yeah and that's where you call my crew and they come in and it costs you a couple couple grand you're going to drop a car on it right but you're going to make more than a car on it over time because if you make these videos and people keep buying them and it's part of a series yeah. one video helps sell the next video helps sell the next video helps sell the first video and they all come back around and then you sell packages you know that's the business side of it right and this is the side that a lot of people out there start some people that don't know yell you know they start ripping you apart well i thought you were a photographer and they'd be like oh, i thought you were cutting hair well you know what it this is your business right i'm a photographer that is a business yes this whole site becomes a business and photography is still there you're still cutting hair right but it's a business that you want to grow you have the ability to monetize through uh, your you could have the scissor company make your own brand of scissors yeah they can put your name on it it's still their thing but it's sponsored by you you have your own supplies that you can start selling yeah. and you put together these packs where you have a scissor pack and you have the combs and you have all the stuff that they need in the package they buy from you yeah you know there's that ability to monetize this stuff i mean you're building adding nine thousand subscribers a month is very good i don't think i was adding that many when i was uh, at thirty thousand subscribers maybe you've just tapped into a niche that do- didn't exist before or right. nobody was exploiting well, no one's no one's posting content as often, and and you look at what and I've learned the learned thing. from you guys is um, first off, I've started investing in equipment, 
um, right away, I was like, all right, what are they using? So they're using the Zoom. I got the Zoom. They're using Rode mics. I'll buy that, you know? So I just started investing and buying the equipment, making good content and putting it out. I look at like, there's huge, there's two big major beauty online companies that sell education. Um, And then there's a couple other ones that are like membership based. For me, it was like, you know what? I'm going to blow it out of the water because I'm going to do it for free. And there's no way they can compete because they can't produce. They'd have to pay $2,000, $3,000. Every shoot. Every shoot. See, that's to that produce thing the video. where people try to make, and we see it in music uh, music industry. You're spending all this money. You're spending a million dollars to make one music video that's gone in a month or a week. Right. And at this point, you said good enough, which is one of those things that not every video is going to be perfect. Right. But good enough but still quality better than other people goes a long way it yeah. saves you time uh you had no photo background is that correct no nothing you just picked up the camera started watching my videos and learning yeah how to make these videos i mean well basically for me it was like when um when we started making videos i decided to upload the first one on youtube it was me and one of my guys that works for me um he said i was like you know what instead of going to the bar after work on wednesday nights let's film Let's shoot videos, drink beer, and just have fun. So, so we did. And we were cutting mannequin heads and um, filming them. And then people started watching. And I was like, you know what? Let's voice it over. I used to work in radio. I can, I got a, a condenser mic at my house. Let's voice it over. And That'll people be cool. are finding it to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, that, see, I did the same exact thing before Frono's photo. I was going to the bar, and I don't drink really at the bar. Uh, I was on there like a Wednesday, and then i maybe be there Thursday. Then i find myself there Friday, because that's where people go. And then I was like what could I be using these three to four hours yeah. for that could be better? And that's when I locked myself at home starting to create content and that's yeah. where I'm here now. And it's funny because I've watched some of your, uh, there was like a, a three year anniversary. I think that's as far back as I got mm-hmm. that video or something where yeah. you were showing different. Three years was this year. Was it? Yeah. Okay. I'm so still not at four years yet. Whatever you did with the video where you showed past videos, mm-hmm. like you just sitting at the table uh-huh. or whatever with a, a much smaller fro. Um, you know, it was just funny. It was cool to watch it and just to see the evolution of it. And and that makes me comfortable because it's like, all right, we've been doing this for, I think, eight months now. And it's a lot of work. And you don't know if you're doing it right. And, you know, but it's good to have a template. So you've been doing it for eight months. You followed a lot of what I've done. Yeah. Uh, and you, how quickly did it catch on? Because it's obviously catching on. It caught on pretty fast. I mean, it was definitely it's just blown up. I mean, I remember calling companies. I was like, do you want to sponsor my website? I got this cool new idea and no one answers the phone ever. I mean, calling and getting a sponsor is the, is the hardest thing ever. But, um, now it's becoming a lot easier because well, now that right. now they need you. Now I send them screenshots. I'm like, yeah, 700,000 views last month on my channel. Do you want to get in on this? Uh, you know, and now I feel like it's starting to come together. Yeah. You know? Well, they, they want you now. That's right. what happens after time. They start realizing that, you don't need them as much as they need you because you now reach the people that they want to get in touch with. Right. And before they wouldn't talk to you, now they're going to talk to you. They're going to send you gear. You can do gear reviews. Right. You can talk about the products you like. It sounds like you're doing just about everything you need to be doing. You're just yeah. you're learning as you go. You establish yourself and you just... I think the main thing is you just kept making content or you continue to make content. That is the one thing that I could not stress more to anybody ever that asked me, how do you become successful on YouTube? It's, well, it's not making one video a week, you know, and putting out three a month. It's, it's quality content that's consistent, that's easily consumable. I like the fact that you have a long form video that goes out each week. I like the fact that you have short form videos and I like the fact that you, you have a podcast. You've really done a great job. Yeah. And I think for me, I never looked at YouTube as that I even cared if I got 300,000 views on a video. I never thought it was possible, first off, cutting hair. But I also looked at, um, you know, it's got to be one of those things where when when you're making the content, I made it for a purpose. I made it for hairdressers to learn. I didn't make it to make a viral video. Right. You know, and it just... Well, because viral videos, you have one and then you have to try to replicate that whole process again instead of just making content. The stuff that's catching on, celebrity stuff, is going to bring people back... It may not bring those people back. They may not be interested in cutting hair, right. but they may be interested in getting their hair cut this way. And then they go to their salon and they go, I saw this guy teach how to make haircuts. Uh, use This is what I want. And they'll show the video on their phone when they're sitting there at the salon. And yep. that person may start following you, the salon person. Yeah, I actually had a lady drive from Virginia. Um, so it was about a four hour drive for her to get her haircut last week. 
she drove four hours, got there. I cut and colored her hair, and then she drove back to Virginia. Because she saw because you online. Because she saw it on YouTube, and she showed my video to a hairdresser, and the hairdresser messed it up, and so she came to see me. That stuff's awesome. I know. That's really cool. Um, what else can you think of before we wrap it up? So my only other question is with gear. So I... I have a 60D, which is what I've been shooting with, with a reg- the kit lens that came with it. Wow. Which I never would have said any of these words before. It's all good. But the, um, so I'm trying to figure out, cause I, and I also have a T3, which is what I started with, That's right? Um, so what I'm trying to figure out, cause I shoot on my podcast, I shoot one angle with the T3, which is 720. Mm-hmm. And then I shoot with the 60D. And um, so I'm trying to figure out where I want to, update which is the message i sent you yeah and so i'm trying to figure out where i'm going what i'm doing and i know that i don't think in my life i don't know if i need full frame i don't know if that's something i should get or if i should just stick with because i shoot a lot of video i think i think the glass is going to be important yeah lenses um 60d is fine that's what we actually use during my DSLR guide to shooting video. Yeah. that's what todd used to shoot a lot of the sample videos and that's an older camera at this point okay um for but you, you can get it for like 900 bucks. Yeah. Which was, you but know. But for you, glass is where it's at. Yeah. If you're going to do macro shots of somebody cutting hair, you go pick up a macro lens. And we're looking at a 105, uh, the, the 100 macro. That's a very good one. You can find it at Allen's Camera Has It, your local. They, you can drive out there. Yeah. They're in Levittown. They have, they have a lot of used gear. You may find some great solid lenses for what you're doing because you're not super worried about focus. You don't need that focus speed. You're going to pre-focus right. and get it to where you want. So I guarantee you they have used macro lenses that are going to be perfect okay. for you to do those close-up shots. I, it's fantastic you've done all this with a kit lens. It shows people that it doesn't freaking matter, especially yeah. when it comes to this video. But quality video is going to be a, a pretty important. This lens that's on here is 1600 bucks for that 51 2 uh, Yeah, about that. So that's... A solid piece of glass, okay. but you don't need to spend that money on that. You could you could spend sixteen hundred bucks and get multiple lenses. I think that finding a maybe a, a twenty four to seventy or a seventeen to fifty that they make that's a two point eight is going to allow you to let more light in or get that shallow depth of field. Um, well, they did. Um, I was looking at the six D with the twenty four to one hundred five. I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, it's twenty four to one hundred five is fine. It's an f four. It's a good lens. Again, I would just go to Allen's and just buy some used stuff. Buy used. They stuff. have twenty four to one hundred fives there. You'll get them used if they have them in stock. And the f four is fine. That's going to be a VR, I believe, or an IS. Uh, so for if you're going to somebody's going to handhold it, it's right. pretty cool. Okay. Um, but gear wise, lighting is going to help you. Yeah, I bought a bunch of soft boxes, so we're using that. All right, so you realize how important that is for making your videos good. Yeah. You talked about audio. Did you have any audio questions for Steven? Because he runs the audio here. Yeah, we talked to um, the the Zoom I'm using, um, and what I did was I followed you guys on running it into the GoPro, which we no longer do. You don't use the GoPro anymore, which is well, we use the GoPro, but we don't run the audio through there. Right, we sync it all up. So. Um, so I guess my question for Steven would be, did you, um, when you're putting, when you're syncing up the audio file, you, you, what do you do with the audio file? So you take the audio file and then your, I use Final Cut Pro, um, and I just take the audio file from the GoPro line already. So I guess, is that what it's called? I don't even know. The, yeah. The track. So, so your your main source of audio is pretty much the GoPro audio because you're you're connecting it directly in from the Zoom. Yeah, because I think a lot of people don't understand that this takes... I we shoot this Friday morning and I'm editing in between while colors are processing while clients you know so I'm it's about a four hour process oh, yeah. and I know yours is even crazier it even this video time. right here is going to take forever but um, but yeah so how do you take the um, the audio if it's a separate track how do you sync it up with the main because I'm guessing you would put it in a main yeah the main track what I do basically is and what we used to do is going directly into the GoPro kind of like you do but I never use the GoPro audio I only use that as the main source audio to to actually sync up everything okay uh, I always use the zoom audio to begin with so I basically take that raw zoom file I take it into Adobe Audition I have a preset on there for compression that we use uh, so I export that. I add the compression line, everything up, export it as one final file. So that's my audio. That's the podcast right there generally. Okay. Then I bring that into Premiere. And from there, we clap each time. So we sync everything up. I think there's five total audio files because we have four cameras and then the main source audio. So then once I line everything up, then I just only keep that source audio on there and cut and export the video from there. But 
again, I don't use that GoPro because for some odd reason, the GoPro compresses internally in the camera. So you're not getting that direct raw audio from the zoom, which is really odd. But yeah, I yeah. don't know what it's doing. It must be the codec they use or something for the video, but it does compression. Yeah, because if anybody ever tried this, basically I got it. I put, I lined up all the GoPro footage and then I tried to throw the audio in. And by the end of the thing, it was it's off. It's off. Yes. Yeah. That's the other thing. The GoPro, for some reason, is five frames off. That's yeah. the number. It's five frames off. It gets longer. And yeah. <laughs> and by the time you get about halfway through, if say you're recording an hour and a half podcast, when I get to about 50 minutes, it starts to get another frame off from there. So it gets about six frames. It's really weird. I have to end up cutting the audio yeah. actually at and the end and syncing it another or adding it, just moving it frame ahead. It's yeah. really odd. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It so is, it is. I commend you on that. Thank you. It takes me probably six to eight hours. I mean, now with the third audio source too, with the third microphone we added, it probably takes a good hour to edit just the audio portion. Which is what I find really interesting and I've never thought, of, like I don't even focus on the, I, I want the audio to be good, obviously, yeah. but I don't focus on it like you break it down like it's a recording studio and you make the audio perfect. Then you add it to the pretty I much. never edited the audio. I just kind Which of we didn't do at the beginning either. Right. But then as soon as Steven came in to take that over, the audio quality jumped leaps and bounds. Right. And it's and I'm sure he can give you some tips and tricks to do it. But it's actually time for Steven to start making some videos about audio, which means <laughs> I'm going to be filming Steven and we'll go. put those videos up so that he can make those tutorials and then he can start that whole process like what you're doing. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's cool that you're focusing on video even more now because, I mean, I like watching the photography stuff and it's funny because I, I didn't know any of this stuff before, but we're definitely, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what you guys do with the rest of it. All right, so I think we've... I think we've uh, done. I, I enjoyed this. This was fun. I would keep going, but I think we've reached a point where we've done enough. Yeah. Um, it it's amazing. You know, you get those viral because you get you get those viral videos. My most watched video is only at like six hundred and fifty thousand or so. Okay. And that's a video from almost three years ago uh, about my gear. And I know that gear videos are what go out there, but I also have other videos with four hundred, five hundred thousand. So there's multiple ones like that over yeah. the years. Um. But it's always fascinating to see you get those viral ones. But what happens is most people that watch those aren't probably going to subscribe. Exactly. But yeah. they're still very good, especially if you're getting paid for them through YouTube. You know, 600,000 600, views, it's worth a pretty penny. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, we're going to talk about that off air because we don't share a lot of those numbers. But it's not bad. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not bad at all. It's it's a nice little living throughout a year. I think what people look at, but I pay for my website. I pay for it's it's one of those things where it pays for you to continue. Yeah. It allows you to keep going. And there's nothing you know? wrong. With, and then everything else that you do is well, absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with giving a free website and then asking people to say uh, by thanking you, as Gary V wrote in his book, The Thank You Economy. If you keep giving, you give, give, give. And he says, give, 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 ask. Meaning you give so much content that when it's time to ask for something, people are more than willing. Yeah. The majority, like a good number, are going to say, all right, you know what? I'll buy whatever it is that you have because that supports what you're doing. And most people get it. Right. Some people don't, but that's fine. And not everybody needs to pay. It's free for a reason. You know, right. So you're able to monetize it. You're getting money from YouTube. You're busting your freaking ass building it. But yeah. the great part happens when you build it to such a point. Well, I won't say it runs on autopilot because... Stephen can tell you how much I work. Oh, uh, yeah. I haven't stopped. And I'm, I'm at right. that point now after three and a half ish years where I'm trying to figure out what I need to do to keep it fresh for me because uh, I've never lasted in a job more than a year and a me half neither. personally. Yeah. But this is your baby. It's your business. So you have created something to show people that you can go from zero to uh, 30 some thousand in a matter of a couple months. Well, in under a year, under a year you yeah. built something and you put your, you, you know, you've taken from time, you own your own business. You've taken your own personal time after work to sit there and bust your ass to make this happen. Yeah. You're going to be teaching. You're going to be able to do your own classes. You're going to be able to do boot camps around the country where you get paid to fly out there. And it's a nice little paycheck when you set it up right and people want to learn from you, yeah. especially the advanced people, because they're willing to learn from you a lot because in photography, you have once you hit like a pro status, you're most likely not going to go take a lot of classes. Because when you're teaching photography, there's not a lot of new techniques unless it's very niche. Okay. Like you're going to teach master class on lighting. You're going to teach a class on shooting hockey in general. You know, you're not going to get a lot of people for it. But 
you know, you're going to find that in the, in, in what you're doing, you're going to be able to get some people to come out and support that. Yeah. So I really uh, commend you on what you've done. It, it's pretty amazing. I love hearing the numbers and I love seeing Thanks. that you, you started listening to us and this just shows everybody out there. You bust your ass, you make quality content that's consistent and you really make the time to do it it's not for everybody but there is that special breed of person that can do it and i think matt you've got it that's what i said i got i gotta buy at least a t-shirt or something from you i've <laughs> you've, you've shown me my whole business model you know so i mean yeah i said i want to pick up the video guide and i'm definitely gonna do that yeah so. when that comes out you're more than welcome to buy it of course i will and uh you know whatever i mean that's that's how it is we, we try to help each other out and it's great to watch you grow Thanks. All right, Matt. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. All right. So there you guys have it. Uh, Fantastic. We're going to come right back. We'll wrap it up. And that's about it. See you soon. So there you have it. That shows you if Matt can come up with an idea, not even being a photographer, most of you guys out there watching our photographers you're going to have a leg up with creating content. He was just using his Canon 60D, his T3, I don't even remember which camera he said. T3, yeah. T3 with kit lenses, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. He's putting out consistent content four or five times a week. He started a podcast. He's getting possible opportunities for advertisers. He is getting traction. The amount of subscribers, he's adding as many, I think as many subscribers a day as I'm adding, Yeah, which is great. I mean, he's in a field You'd be like, well, hair salons. Well, there's a lot of people that watch that stuff. And the, the fascinating thing is the, the scissor video that he made where he's showing you the difference between a good scissors and a $900 pair of scissors. Blows my mind. It's just unbelievable. It may not have been the best shot content, but it made the point. Mm-hmm. And it said, oh, f- fudge. That's <laughs> why I would use $900 scissors. It's like buying quality glass. So he did go out and he bought a Canon 6D with a 24 to 105, which is an IS, which is a great lens for video. Oh, yeah. I believe in there, I talked about 2.8 lenses and one fours and things like that for me is, is what I would use. Cause I think stills first, but when it comes to video, there is nothing wrong with using those F fours, especially that they have IS that is more important in video than in, in photography, in my opinion. Definitely. So the one thing that he and I talked about for a good 15 minutes as, as we were breaking down before he left was that he's teaching classes. And I was like, what are you charging? He's like, like 125 bucks. I'm like, you up the price, but include a gift package. Include a pair of scissors because I know what he you know, what he would pay pay for how much they cost him through the company. I know what the markup is because I asked him. I'm like, all right, create a grab bag of five hundred dollars of free stuff. It's got hair products, it's got combs, it's got quality stuff. Even the sponsors may just give you the things to put in there. Charge more money, charge four or five hundred bucks. But if they're getting five hundred dollars in in product back that you either didn't pay for or cost you a little bit, but gave you more value, then people are going to sign up in droves and you're going to make more money. So he is going around teaching. He is creating more content. It is taking a lot of time. He is engaged. He does have a kid, but he's finding a way to make, he owns a salon. Yeah. He's finding a way to work and make this content and bring other sidekicks in because it's good for them to be seen. Because if he has a sidekick hair cuttery guy that goes, not hair cuttery, just a, a hair, a, a what, what are they called? Hairstylist a person. Or a hairstylist person, I think. <laughs> if they're in there Dresser, yeah. and they're, what'd you say? Hairdresser. I thought he said hipster. Hairdresser. Hipster. I like hairstylist person. But if, they, if they're if they creating a, a haircut video and it goes well, there's people that will drive in just to have them cut their hair, right? It's just fascinating that this can happen in any industry. And it shows you that what what he doesn't have an afro, right? He doesn't have an afro. You don't need to just have a fro to be successful on the internet. (laughs) You just have ideas and you constantly put out quality content that gets better and better and people are going to watch. The videos that he gets 600,000 views on are because he uses celebrities' names and people want to see how those haircuts are made. Yep. Hey, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Keep putting out celebrity haircut videos every week. This is how they get their haircut. This is this guy's haircut. You know, even do the shaved head haircut. This is how Mr. Clean makes his hair. (laughs) But the reason I had him in was because I... I love consulting. I love sitting across from somebody on the table. And there goes your 15 minutes, by the way. <laughs> I love sitting across from somebody on the on the table and just brain dumping, hearing what they have to say and coming up with ideas. And Stephen can tell you that when the camera goes off, we continue to talk. And there's even more good stuff that comes out when the camera stops rolling. But, 
you know, that's that. Yeah, his interview was actually could have easily been over an hour because when the camera did stop, like you said, you guys chatted for how long? And you're like, oh, we should have included this. But sometimes and you forget, like, you're, yeah. when the camera stops, you're like, oh, I forgot to say this. That's why I'm coming up with this stuff. But this interview right here is gold for anybody. It tells you how you can do this. The secrets to getting tons of YouTube subscribers it's because there's story. no secrets. Yeah. There's no secrets. All right. Let's get into gear of the week. I've got two items. How do you need to do on your clock? You're, you have uh, three minutes, 50 seconds. All right, do your thing, because we're going to be doing this thing for a minute or two. Okay. All right, first things first is you talked about battery backups a week or two ago. Yes. Or somebody did. Uh, I think being, you brought it up, and I kind of talked about it a Being that bit. I had my new desk made, I'm getting a secondary battery backup that's better that's going to go on my main computer, and then I'm moving my current battery backup to the other side of the desk where the second iMac's going. Gotcha. So, uh, I've, do, you have a, do you have one? I do not have one. I need one. So when I when lightning again strikes strikes my house, like I talked about last time, actually it would probably be fried anyway. But at least my power won't be all the way out. Oh. That is a big giant box. Shit. Oh my god. This it's this big. It it's base. Oh, there's handles on the side. It's not. <laughs> it's almost as big as this box. So this is wow. an APC battery backup. This has a three year peaceful of mind warranty. So basically, it's a 150 VA. 865 watts, whatever that means, up to 164 minutes of runtime, 10 outlets, three-year warranty. Uh, so 10 outlets. I believe eight of them are actually battery uh, backups, and two of them are just regular batteries. Wow. Uh, not batteries, regular just plugs that aren't tied into the battery. So I use this, and whenever my power surges or something, which we had fixed, by the way, Pico yeah. was out here. Nice. Um, they fixed it, but I had all those surges happening. My backup would kick in to make sure that the power was even and that my computer was not going to get zitzed or fritzed or fried. So this was, I bought this with free shipping. It was like 179 bucks. Um, and yes, that's a little expensive, but you're, if you're sitting there editing something and your computer and your power goes out and you didn't save it or it didn't auto save, yeah, you're suck. SOL. For $179 for the peace of freaking mind and to have 10 outlets, you can spend 40 or 50 bucks just for a non-powered outlet thing. What are you looking at? A power strip? <laughs> you, you look like Wilson from... Uh... <laughs> From uh, Home Improvement, because all I see, uh, all you see is the hair over the fence. Nose. Right? Yeah, over the fence. So <laughs> anyway, before I was interrupted <laughs> oh by Stephen, I believe you said, "What are you looking at?" and sent it to me. So <laughs> yeah, I did not exactly actually was, interrupt. Anyway, so <laughs> I highly suggest getting a battery backup like this. All right, I'm going to take this off the table, and all we're right, going to talk about the second gear of the week, <laughs> which is the DJI Phantom Vision Two that you got to fly yesterday. So what do you awesome. think about that, dude? So cool. It was. Honestly, one of the coolest things I've done in a while because it, you're, you're, first of all, I felt like a little kid again flying this thing and it flies so high. What is the actual highest it can go? I, 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 it, they say 300 meters. So Which, I don't know if that's a thousand feet or right around. Yeah. But it's pretty high up there. This is feet, it, right? Yeah. It's got the props. This one has the cameras in it. You saw the, uh, the unboxing of it. And what else did you see? Oh, we, we filmed the video yesterday, we which is coming out soon. Instagram and Facebook about it, some preview clips. It's unbelievable to fly this thing, because especially when you can't even see it in the sky and you're looking at your phone to do it. I mean, I'll go power it on just for a second sure. and show people what to do. <laughs> fly it in the, in the loft. That'll be fun. Well, let's, I'll let Steven do, do the cameras while Don't he's doing do it that. Right here. I'm not going to do it right here. But this is the remote for anybody watching at home. And I wrote on it. You're going to see this all in the... In the, the I don't even call it a review, but we just went out and we flew the thing and talked to you about how to fly and, it's like and a all quick those preview things. Video kind yeah, of it's thing. like a preview. It's like a, this is how you turn it on. This is how you land. This is how you fly. This is what's happening. The way that I like making videos, I can tell you what information I think is important, and then you can dig deeper if you want to dig deeper. Yeah. So um, I'm turning that on. I'm turning that on. I'm not going to do this over here, but you're going to need to talk because I'm going to be in the background. <laughs> Uh, one of the coolest things, too, is when we went, oh, Sutter, you're here. Quick, let's take over the show. <laughs> <laughs> let's kick him out. <laughs> For those that, that can't see, Sutter is now at the table. I'm going to get back. I'm going to do it for Oh, he's kicking you out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But one of the coolest things is when we went back and checked out the actual footage is you could see all of Philadelphia. You could see the skyline, the bridge, everything. And you got some photos from the top, which were raw DNG and just amazing. I mean, so if you're watching at home, Stephen probably put these up on the screen yeah. as a picture in picture right now. I will. You already made a note on the back. But I already make read another it. vote. Oh, make another, another note. note. All right. So. One of the things is, yeah, it was really cool up there. It does shoot raw. I wish that it did better video. It, me too. Um, That's the only thing I don't like. Highly compressed. I wish Super it shot compressed. raw type video like the uh, Pro Tune. Go, Pro Tune like GoPro. The only thing is if you get the GoPro unit, you then have to get away to see it. So you have to open up your DJI Phantom. You have to get, they make kits and everything out there that allow you to. Uh, get a separate monitor so you can see it because if you're flying you can't really fly this thing blind no, no you way. need to be able to know where it's at and be able to follow it around um, and there's also those people out there who sat there and said well there's other companies that make kits that you can build yourself mm -hmm. if you really want to build one yourself and go through that whole process and take the time you can do that but most of them don't even have the GPS ability that this thing does yeah. the reason why this thing flies so stable is because it has the GPS satellite connections and it knows where it's at so it's not going to sit there and wobble back and forth like it may do now when I go and take it off <laughs> but um, it, it's it's fascinating I they sent me this one I didn't pay for it they asked they said you want to review it I'm like absolutely do I get to keep it I hope so yeah um, and, I, and hopefully they come out with more that I get to keep and play now it's just i flew it over my dad's house trying to make that work to see what that looked What'd your like dad think he, he loved it super he's like, cool you and your toys <laughs> he's like they just keep sending you stuff i, I showed my parents uh i stopped by that my parents house the other day and they were like oh my god it's an awesome tool you got there and i'm like it's not really a toy it's not oh, something that not yeah it's not something to mess around with i mean it's something that you have to take very seriously because this can hurt someone really bad for those on the podcast portion, he is flying this thing in the house. And it's really loud and awesome. Dude, I can feel that wind from here. Oh, <laughs> don't crash it. Oh my god. That thing is so cool. Okay. Oh. Oh. Keep talking. The best part is that you <laughs> I love how you, you put the controls and it's like Independence Day style, like <laughs> forward, back, left, right. <laughs> All right. So that was that. It, it's kind of scary flying this thing indoors, but you can see it if you're watching it at home on the GoPro angle, hopefully. Yeah, I'll switch to that. Uh that you can see it flying the thing back and forth. You and, can see it in the back of the D eight hundred too. All right, cool. Nice. So this thing's awesome. It's now, it's a new future. What's cool about this, I know a lot of people have been using them in the past because they've been hobbyists and they've built them themselves, but mm -hmm. this thing's going mainstream and there's going to be solutions and ways to use this. You brought up, well, one thing is you can do it at weddings, yep. at a wedding party, and then you brought up doing it at the block party where there's 7,000 people inside the, what we call the, at the piazza, like seven to 8,000 people inside this courtyard. If you take it off in the back and fly towards the stage over people's heads and then take off when it gets near the stage, that is going, that would be an incredible shot. Epic shot. But I'm not sure I want to take the, the risk and no. the liability yeah. to fly over those people's heads just to get that footage. Yeah, cause Unless it, the, I was hired and the liability was picked up by the station. Yeah, because like I said, this uh, it, this is not a toy. It's a serious thing. That, I mean, when these propellers are, are going, this could easily really hurt someone. It can go 30, it's, it goes it's 30 fast. miles an hour. So fast. And you saw how fast it was going side by side. So, yeah. so that's that. Oh, we need to wheel a fro it. Oh, yeah. That's gear that. of the week. Steven, let's get wheel of fro going. All right, this week on the Wheel of Fro is the same thing that we had last week. <laughs> I'm trying to get DJI Phantom. Week. I'm going to talk to them to see if we can make a sliver of the question mark, a sliver of the Like on Wheel of Fortune, how they have the million-dollar one. Well, I'm trying to do that with this, where we get just a very small portion of it. If it lands right there, then they would win the DJI, DJI Phantom. If it lands on the question mark, they don't get to pick it. But... That's the only thing. That so would be pretty awesome. On the wheel, we've got the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide to Getting Out of Auto with the Flash Guide as well. We have a question mark, which we did land on once. We have Road. Don't forget to sign up uh, and try out at myroadreel.com. That's spelled M-Y-R-O-D-E-R-E-E-L.com. So go to roadreel.com and be all you can be. I was waiting for that. Uh, think Tank. 
we've landed on that a bunch of times. Adorama picks, you can get some free stuff. Borrow lenses, still forget if it's 200 or 250 dollars oh because I forgot to ask them. I did send back my 200 to 400 to them. Squarespace, you can go to fro uh, squarespace.com/fro. Sign up for your 14 day free trial. But they are get, that's what it landed on last week, right? Uh, yes. So the the guy so. won a, a business. What was that noise? Stutter. Stop making noise. Stutter. <laughs> Stutter. Um, Adorama picks. My guide. Think Tank Road. That 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 that. And this week's spinning. I will tell you after the wheel is done. Oh. Uh-huh. The suspense. Are we ready? Uh, yes. Wheel on bro. I just want to get a good Spinny McSpinnerson. It's all the yoga. Here it comes. Where's it going to go? I'm sensing a question mark opportunity. Not even close. Frono's photo <laughs> beginner guide. So congratulations are in order to Mr. Jose Garcia. Jose. Sounds like a baseball player. Yeah, it does sound like a baseball player. So congratulations, Jose Garcia. I'm going to give you both of my guides because <laughs> I was for that I'm too. nice and, and, and all like that. So I want to make it worth your while. That's that's a hundred and that's a, a value of 67 and 67 carry the one. That's 134. I always you know what? You know what pisses me off about math? What? I loved math. I loved math in school. I did drop out as a senior from math class because they told me I had to buy a graphing calculator and I didn't want to go home and be like, Mom, Dad, you've got to spend $180 for a calculator. They were so expensive. I just didn't feel that that was right. Texas Instruments. Yeah, TI-83 mm-hmm. at the time. Like I'm the like standard. Still, I think, is a standard. I just like, I, I, I can't justify asking my parents because at the time in the 90s, in like 99, they were struggling like really struggling with money and we were in a an expensive area and I mean, we were going through this thing where we may have had to move and all and all this stuff and I didn't want to go home and be like you have to spend this money for this math class and I went to my counselor and I said do I need this class to graduate and they said no we highly recommend that you keep it and I said okay I'm out of it thank what you ki- what kind of math was it do you remember some form of algebra yeah I didn't get very far in math I really didn't because I got into like a bad track in school of stupid class this is that yeah. I was in, like, I don't know how it happened that I ended up in, the, in this track, but it wasn't good because I had some bad teachers. And when you get bad teachers, it really fucks up with everything. And, and it just so anyway, I was in that in that track and, and the math wasn't good. Plus, I didn't like the class because it didn't have any windows. So it was dark and it just messed with my chi. Yeah. So I got out of it and took like another photography class or something. Actually, my schedule in, as a senior year was freaking awesome. First class, you go right to your first class before homeroom, was in the library. It was like desktop publishing. Okay. Then we would go to homeroom for the 15, 20 minutes. Then I went back to the library for the same, for, in the same place for another class, which was graphic design or something. Another, I went from desktop publishing to coding or something like that into an independent study of photography. Then I went to lunch. Then I went to like gym class. Then I went to photography class. And then that was it. It was all like maybe social studies was in there somewhere. It sounds like college courses over like high school classes. And public speaking and all this stuff. Yeah, It was really cool. The classes, you, you only, some of them you only had two days a week and some you had three days a week. What was great is we had, they just got new computers. They were all like Pentium 2 processors, Dells, because they, they spent like $3.4 million. They got a grant to get all this stuff. And we had the nice monitors. They all had a zip drive. So we all had oh, these the zip good discs. Old zip drives. And some of the people got Ziploc where they would lose all of their information. That was when the zip disk would get scratched. So yeah. would, but they were fast. They were 100 megabytes of data that you could stream video on. I downloaded my first MP3 in that class. Uh, pirated? Pirated. Well, it was before nice. Napster. This was 99. <laughs> it was right when Napster was when about to hit. go big. Back yeah. in 99. Um, it was right around the time when, when uh, Phantom Menace was coming out, Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So what I had the whole class do, we turned up the shitty speakers that Dell had. We all counted to three and hit play at the same time at the same time we hit play so it was in surround sound playing the 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 speed bike part of the the trailer (laughs) and so the teacher thought that was anyway i think it was april fool's day or something or there was a i think i was messing with the teacher i sat at the same computer all the time and i played a sound of a of a phone ringing so he went to go pick it up so then when he got closer back to us i hit the thing again so he went to answer the phone again 
and nobody was there. And then he would hang it up and I would ring it again. And he kept doing it until he realized what we were doing. <laughs> it was funny back then. I'm sure it was. And we also hid Grand Theft Auto 1 on the server in the network. Yeah, we hit, we hit a bunch of stuff on our servers oh, in uh, computer class. It, we, in you had school. to know the secret way, secret folder ar- hierarchy. There's like 40 different paths to. There was like you had to go into folder three and then you had to go into folder. P and then you had to go into folder this and then you had to find your way into it and that's how we did it. Nice. We, we kept that game in there and that was Grand Theft Auto 1 which was top down only. And that's it. <laughs> that's Raw Talk. Good story. <laughs> anyway, I'm off to Chicago. By the time you're hearing this, I'm hopefully still living and uh, didn't 370 it. Malaysian flight. Oh, it's terrible. It is terrible. It's too soon. Too soon. Yeah. They still haven't found the damn thing. I know. It's it's crazy. It's ridiculous. This day and age. you know. In this day and age. Correct. Anyway, so hopefully Chicago was fun. You're going to hear this. Uh, we record on a Wednesday. I'm flying out Thursday. Hopefully the baseball game was good and a bunch of people came out to, to hang out with me in the right field bleachers because I'm going to be a bleacher bum freezing my ass off. It's going to be about 44 and we don't know how windy it's going to be. Or you're going to be completely by yourself. Or I'll be completely <laughs> by myself. Hey, there's out. one girl on Facebook. <laughs> I think she's in high school. She said she'd love to go with me, but I think she's in high school. Uh, Okay. That ruins it. Well, if you just go and watch a game. Well, I say bring a parent with you. Yeah. That, I'm that makes her message. I'd be like, bring a parent with better. you, please. Yeah. Get their permission first. <laughs> Can you sign this form? Sign this form. <laughs> oh, God. I did not. Permission slip. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, that's fun. Good stuff here. Matt Beck, awesome job. Definitely. Free salon education. You may not be in the hair salons, but if you want to follow a method that follows my method and then you can follow their method and tweak <laughs> it as you feel feel needs to and you want to grow a following, well, he's got it. And the more he keeps going, the bigger and bigger he's going to get in that industry and become the voice of that industry. I love those things. That's why I, that's why I called him in here to sit down and talk. I'll do that for anybody. It's like a free consulting session. I don't care. I love it. And I want to do paid consulting. I'd love to consult companies. That would be your number one job, I feel like. I'd be so good at it. People ask me all the time, if you don't, if you weren't doing photography, I would do marketing, branding, and consulting. Yep. But the thing with consulting and marketing is there's a lot of people that do it that have never been to the promised land. They've never made it themselves. You can't consult. I mean, you can, but if you've never proven it yourself, if you've never done it yourself and grown a following, you should not be teaching, trying to teach other people how to do it. Like Gary V has built multiple businesses. He started VaynerMedia to prove that he can still build businesses. And now they have 200 employees working for them where he does social media marketing and all this stuff and consulting and branding for all of these major Fortune 500 companies. Wow. So... Maybe one day I'll get him back in here and we'll have another discussion. I'll try to get him down here this time. Yeah, that would be if good. If he's ever here. So that's where we're going to leave it. Sutter, thank you. Anytime. Eckert, thank you. You're welcome. Sorry for interrupting you so many times. I'm it's not okay. really sorry. I know you're not. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't like saying I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not sorry. I'm sorry I'm not sorry. You know sorry, what? Sorry not sorry. Exactly. There you guys have it. That's Raw Talk episode number 80. We are moving on up to the east side. Actually, I'm going to Chicago, so pretty much, yes. Yeah. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. See ya.